Hi, welcome to Our Hollywood. I'm Kim. I'm Daniel. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, today's episode is so fun. And I think everyone that was like a 2012 child, or like teenager, I guess, will enjoy this. Yeah. We talked about the Hunger Games. Uh, okay, we kind of like went with, what was your inspiration for your color tone of your outfit? The palette. Oh, I was just thinking. Dark Hunger Games. Dark. Yeah. Just like 12. Brown. Brown, gray. Dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Earth. <laughs> okay, same. I was like, oh, Earth. Ground, gray, brown. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm glad we had like a similar thought Yeah, I was process. like, I think I should wear like brown. Because I don't have really gray. Because, like, you know, gray was, like, the yeah. color of, like, District 12 or whatever. And I was like, I don't know. Or, like, know red, maybe. Or she, mm-hmm. she would, like, wear red. I, yeah, I was thinking that, too, but I didn't feel like wearing red today. No. I was feeling the dark moodiness. Mm-hmm. Also, like, I just want to preface saying, like, in the beginning of filming, I was like, yeah, I was, like, a mild fan, but I think I talked the most. <laughs> which I feel like I usually do, which is, that's, so that's a different thing. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> um, okay, I just so, can't shut up. Right, me either. Okay. It's like a thing. Someone like was telling me they were like, "Do you... someone told me?" Oh, I know the reason why. What? Anyways, just go. Oh, What's wait, no, opinion? but but what? Someone was like, they, someone was like, "You don't listen," and I was like, "Yeah, you're not the first person to say that to Who me." Who told you that? Only after, but I was like, okay, I do like. I swear, <laughs> I don't. listen. No, you don't though. No, like, but you like do, I do. You don't. No, you're like my mom. I just like have you... good memory, but like when I when someone's talking to me, I'm genuinely listening. I just don't remember anything. <laughs> Which I don't think is a good thing. But I'm listening. You're like, ears are you're on. not. I'm present in the conversation. But you're not retaining anything. And I think that's the issue. But I don't retain anything with anything. Okay. Just kidding. Me recalling everything from a book series from 2012. <laughs> so I guess that's a lie. Yeah, I don't listen. I don't know. You need to unpack that. Well, you don't. Not retain. here, though. Yeah, not here. But like, and with a therapist. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Ariana was giving free um, therapy. Did you see that? Ariana Grande? She partnered with better help oh i know yeah, yeah yeah but she wasn't giving the advice well no i hope i hope not I yeah not qualify. but the way you said it it made me think like she was giving She's like sitting in a little it was like a twitter t- q a and she was just like okay guys therapy questions help yeah I that's wish. what that's what i thought you meant and i was I like that's, wish that's weird okay so anyways before we get started um what? be sure to follow us on instagram at our dot hollywood um at our hollywood on tiktok we gotta stop posting on there again um, our Hollywood on YouTube, all the full um, video versions of the podcast are there, and you guys should watch them because they take me forever to do. <laughs> oh my God, I updated the letterbox. Okay. Yeah, it's up to date now. Okay, good. I don't know what manic That's thing fine. I was going through. Thank you. I, I, yeah. I, okay. Um, add our Hollywood on letterbox so you guys can check out our, um, you know, if you want to watch any of the movies that we've mentioned ever on this show. You just need to add your movies to the movie tag because I don't remember what you talked about, but I just have my list and I okay. added it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, all right, what do we watch this week? Sex Education Corner. Okay, okay. Season three. Okay, what do you think? I want to know what you thought first. Um, okay, I, I'm just tired. I don't like the Maeve and Otis. Like, are they gonna get? Like, I'm so over it. Let them get together. I don't. It's three three seasons. What do you think about the added guy? What's his name? The guy in the wheelchair. Oh, I don't Ian? remember, but okay. Like, are you asking me like if I think he's better with Maeve? No, I'm just asking what do you think about character? them trying to do a love triangle thing? I if it was last season, sure. I don't okay. like. I'm so over it. Like that's like I'm like I don't care. Like at this point, I'm not gonna care if they. Get I felt like it was kind of a throwaway. Like we knew that Maeve was gonna end up with Otis. Was gonna end up with Otis. That's why I don't like love triangles. But like I feel like maybe in season two it would have still been like up in air. Mm-hmm. But by season that's three, true. like we know who's gonna end up with who. And that's why with Ruby and Otis, I feel like I was like, well, they're not going to stay together. Even yeah. though I honestly enjoyed it. Yeah. That relationship. I did too. Especially like the scene where like they started like getting more intimate. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like that's important to see. Because I feel like that's a lot of people who like deflect with like, I don't know, ru- like being rude. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's Like, you know how like it. it's like you're not supposed to ask a question to the person. Like, if you have a question about disability, you're not supposed to ask the person you know with a yeah. disability. You should do your own research. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, as stupid as it is, and, like, people should actually do, like, actual research, like, watching TV and, like, seeing some people, like, act it out in a way. Like, Well, yeah, I saw this thing. I saw, like, an essay, and it was, like, um, that the sex scene between 
him and Maeve mm-hmm. was like huge. It, yeah. So like, I felt the impact yeah. of that. I was like, wow. Like, yeah. I don't think there hasn't been really that much. I mean, I think Arnie, before you, the one with Sam Claflin and he's okay. in a wheelchair. I think I didn't watch it. Arnie movie, has a sex scene in Glee too. And I remember that was like, yeah, do you remember with the, with the, there's one, okay, he has one sex scene with Brittany that they kind of show. It's not full, but But like, it's like, it, that one's made out to be like a funny, no? Not the one with Brittany so much. There was one with, he's like with the girl in the other wheelchair. Oh, yeah. But I think that one was kind of more. Yeah. Comedic. But the one with Brittany, I think was. Yeah, but it, it didn't end well. No. I don't remember it ending well. But like this is the same education different. one was yeah. like actually like a positive representation. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think it sucked that they like brought him into that love triangle. Because I don't think he's going to come that's up That's not fair no. to him, that character. No. To be honest. I wish they kind of would have just written him into the school uh-huh. as like a school, like as a student. So like, is he, what, how old is he? Because no he, he stays at home all day. I don't know. But it would have it been so much better if he was a student because then it would have brought up stuff about like accessibility in the school that's what i'm yeah exactly because he the looks trailer, the but, same age yeah as them and that would be weird if he was older no because yeah, she's, she's in high school in high school there's a lot anyways also i don't think ola deserved the hate no Especially why does everybody season. hate her well because i okay. feel like her emotions were extremely valid this season sure yeah, yeah i think so and like it was like it was real like to be honest like also trying to like come to terms, like not come to terms, but like meet in the middle with like your partner on like sex, and especially like when it comes to like not fetishes, but like what you're, what preferences. You enjoy. Yeah, exactly stuff like that. And like also, I thought it was sweet how like they incorporated her mom more, and like how like mm, seeing yeah. her dad move on like does affect her. And I think those emotions are super valid. Yeah, I don't. Her think... mom didn't die that long ago. No. Yeah, we still pretty fresh. They moved over that pretty quickly last season. Yeah, but I feel like this one they really were like, okay, let's talk about mm-hmm. it. Because uh, yeah, because it's an interesting part of her character. Yeah, I don't know why everyone hates Ola so much though. Like every single sex education video, everyone's like, I hate Ola. Because I didn't like, like the Otis mm-hmm. and Ola romance. But that's plot. not Ola's fault. No, no, I know. She it's literally not. had no idea what was going on with Maeve and him at at yeah, in no. the beginning because he but, okay, never mentioned it. See, that's the thing about it, Otis. If anything, be mad at Otis. It, okay, that's the thing about <laughs> Otis. He like he will just. I feel like he just goes with whoever just to make like Maeve jealous, and it's so annoying. He admit the when he admitted it. Yeah. He when he got up on the table at his party and said that to them, I was like, I would never speak to him ever again no, if I was either no. of those girlies. Mm-mm. Apps and they they do rebound it so quickly. I'm like, and I feel like they moved past that too quickly. They did. Okay. Like he apologized and they were like, okay, and I'm like, no. Yeah. He embarrassed you in front of everybody yeah. at the school. Yeah. Justice for Ruby also. Yeah. Okay. Also, another thing. There wasn't enough Eric and Otis together this season. No. Eric was, like, doing his own thing. Eric was being so annoying this season. Yeah. Low key. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I get he's trying to, like, come. Like, he's trying to express himself and, like, how he's happy with himself. And I can see how that's an issue. Yeah. That his boyfriend is kind of, like, later in the game than he is. But also, like, But I don't think that's fair of him to cheat on his boyfriend. He cheated twice already. Yeah. Yeah. on different people and adam's just trying to be trying to figure out yeah. himself so now Otis or er, eric like, has cheated on all of his boyfriends so far i saw somebody that was saying like i they they want adam and raheem to get together in the next i season. would no that's what I'm they're setting so, up and i'm and i'm, I'm yeah. so into it. because because i don't think eric raheem should be is very adam. raheem is very like accepting but I also I think, like, like, the dynamic between Raheem and Adam is so much more interesting. It is. Because Raheem is like, I read books. And, like, He's, I'm like, intellectual. Artsy. And Adam's like, I'm going to play with my dog. Oh, I love yeah. that little storyline. And it made me so, so if, sad. And also, like... I was afraid that he wasn't going to show up because he was, like, so sad oh, yeah. about the breakup. And, yeah. I was, and I'm so glad that he went. Yeah. I'm proud of him. And Adam's he's like not, one of my favorite characters now, he, and I hated I him. him. But okay, also the other thing about Eric and Adam is that like the relationship started with like bullying, so like that's always going to be mm-hmm. at the root of the relationship. So that's why I'm like, I don't want. There's to always going to be like, like repressed Something feelings about there, that. Yeah. yeah. But so, but then now that they like, okay, now they had that relationship served a purpose, and now let's move I hope, on. Yeah, I hope they they just. If they, if they, they I think they will. To be they honest, better. yeah, they were definitely setting it up, a hundred percent. But I don't, I don't want it to happen. I'm, I do. I want. I'm okay with like the storyline being like Eric is like his ex boyfriends get together. 
Oh, yeah. I like that for him, but I don't want them to make it like a love trial triangle thing with the only oh, they're going to. like three out of the four out gay men at the school. They're definitely going to include the other one in. What's his name? The one know. that turns with Ruby? He's going to get thrown in there. I, I feel it. I like him just being comedic, comedic relief. Yeah, I don't, I don't really need more about him. Yeah, I'm okay with how he is. And also the other girl with the main group. Yeah. They're fine as that. That's like side character. I forgot that Amy was a part of that that trio yeah. at one point in yeah. the beginning. I totally forgot about that because I was like, wasn't there another person? And I was like, oh my god, it was Amy. Yeah. Also, the way they didn't like move on from the Amy thing, I like that. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, she should go to therapy. Yeah. I really like that. I love it too. I love and how she was like, yeah, it's like a Amy is baby as well. Yeah, I love Amy. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we get, we call someone baby. Later on, take a wild I guess. Think, who yeah, is. take a wild guess of the Hunger Games. <laughs> who we could possibly call baby? Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, I okay, I enjoyed it, and I do think I'm excited to see the next season. I guess in yeah, like three years or whatever. It's Future still the, one of the best. It's the best TV show on right now. Okay, I, yeah. I say it. What else did I hmm. watch? Oh wait, Ruby. I'm really sad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I told Daniel this before, but I just want to get it out there. Yeah. Um, I just wish, on paper. even though they like broke up, that Ruby, we still saw more of Ruby because we we still get to like have moments with other characters not otis and Maeve. Yeah. why couldn't we get that with ruby especially when you like set up her dad having ms and like her home situation and then after her and otis break up you're just gonna like they were like well, f off to that yeah bye yeah that was so interesting i hope i really do because i don't think maybe they were just like what i think is like maybe they were just testing how people react to Re- oh, ruby maybe, yeah and then in season four because now ruby's like kind of like a fan favorite um they'll put her he'll they'll do what i'm asking them to do right now okay <laughs> i love ruby she's so pretty yeah i love she's her so pretty and i love the depth yeah me too that i love when mean girls have depth yeah i don't know anyways so i watched <laughs> halloween kills and so like also i find it so funny that you like you didn't know that it was, was it you that was like there's another halloween coming out yeah because like my marketing or like all my ads on literally everything have only been halloween that's why it works for you. Yeah. So I guess targeted <laughs> marketing works. Anyways, so um, I watched the new Halloween movie. Um, so I already knew that this new one was like, this new trilogy was like three. Oh, oh my God. This, I already knew that it was going to be a trilogy, <laughs> right? Like it was, trilogy it was the 2018 three. Halloween and then Halloween Kills and then Halloween Ends. Like I already knew that this was like the middle chunk. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was worried about it. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if it's going to deliver an actual movie. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like some, I feel like sometimes it's going to be too busy setting things up for the next one. Um, but it was really brutal. Yeah, the middle movie in a trilogy is really make or break. Yeah. Catching Fire, so good. Catching Fire, so good. Back to Future 2, yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so basically the movie, like, I guess, I think they're all three going to take place on Halloween night. I'm not sure. Because hmm. it started immediately after the other one ended. And, um, okay, I have some complaints. And, some dis- and I was talking to Devin about it. And so, okay, Jamie Lee Curtis is barely in this movie. Oh. She's, like, in the hospital the entire time. Because, oh. like, in the last, at the end of the last movie, she got stabbed. Mm. And so she's, like, recovering. So, like, she's in the hospital the entire time. But she gets some really good, like, fun dialogue in here in this movie. But also, the rest of the dialogue is, like, not that great. Mm. Every single, ep- like, every single character is, like, 40 years ago. Like, they mention that it's 40 years ago, like, every five minutes. They say, <laughs> they say evil dies tonight, like, 60 times. And I'm like, but it's he's not going to, and we all know it. So yeah. it was like not impactful at all. But there was like a really interesting like theme that it's like. So basically, in this one, the town is like they're over it. They're like, no, we're not gonna have this Michael Myers thing again. Mm-hmm. Like it's happened twice already. Yeah. And so in this one, the town kind of like bands together, gangs up against Michael mm-hmm. Myers, and so they become a character. But I didn't. What they did with it that I thought was really interesting was like they kind of talked. They they kind of like went up with like mass hysteria. So, like, what happens is they, they all the mob ends up at the hospital and they see another... So, like, in the first movie, the way Michael Myers escaped was there was a bus of inmates that mm-hmm. was being moved. The bus, like, you know, everyone escapes. Yeah. So, there were still loose inmates from that bus in the town. So, what happens was some one of the people sees the inmate, like, thing on someone else, mm-hmm. like the inmate uniform. Yeah. And they're like, that's Michael Myers because they've never seen him without a mask. Uh... And so, then the entire town starts chasing after him. And like Jamie Lee Curtis is like, it's not him. It's not him. And no one's listening to her. And they like when she's the like, only person that's seen him without the yeah. mask. Yeah. And then um Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter like tries to help the guy. By the way, spoilers alert for Halloween Kills. 
Um, Judy, Judy Greer. Judy Greer's yeah. in it, yeah. yeah. Judy, she's so good. Um, okay, so Judy Greer, like, helps the uh, the guy. She's like, I know it's not you. I'm going to lock you in here so that they don't hurt you. So she, like, locks him in between this thing where there's, like, two doors. Oh, God. Like a hallway, essentially. And, mm-hmm. at the, and there's stairs coming up on each side. So she locks him in there, and she's like, it's not him, but they're, like, not listening. And so they're, like, literally trying to break in on both sides. And the inmate is, like, scared. Yeah. And he doesn't know what to do, so he jumps out the window. And then they all go outside, and the cop is like, yeah, that, that wasn't him. But he died. Yeah. He, well, he jumped yeah. out, like, a five-story. Like, oh, five-story. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't explain the story. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but he, he jumps out, like, because <laughs> uh, he didn't know what to do. And I was like, that, like, for a Halloween movie, I was not expecting that kind of yeah. commentary on, like, m- mob culture and, like, I guess, sure, cancel culture. I mean, maybe. I don't know, but it was crazy. I was like, wow. Um, but then the ending, okay, this is huge spoilers. It did something that I don't know if I agree with. But so, like, basically, it was in the trailer, so they were setting it up, but they were, like, Jamie Lee Curtis has a line that's, like, every time he kills, he transcends. So what they're trying to set up is, like, Michael Myers is, like, a supernatural figure. Yeah. So, like, you know, he survived the fire at the last one. So, obviously, we, that seed is, like, planted. But the way it ends is, like, so the, the mob finds him, and they beat him up and they like kill him like he has to be dead. He's shot, he's stabbed, whatever. And then but he's like not. And he like comes back to life and kills everyone, like a bunch of main characters. Um, and then Judy Greer, like, she goes up to the house because they're like, there's something. Okay, I also like that they were kind of setting something up with Michael's character that we don't know yet. Like he was recreating photos with the victims, which was weird. I don't know what mm. that's about. But so there's like a window he always stands at. And they were like, um, and the thing that they were trying to say was that like they're like, what, we don't think he was looking out. We think he was looking back at his reflection because, like, he he was trying to, like, cope with what he had done, like, killing his sister in the first yeah. one. Um, and so Judy Greer, like, goes up into the house. They all think Michael's dead. She goes into the house, and she stands at the window, and she's like, what the hell? Like, something's wrong. And Michael Myers appears out of nowhere. Like, I guess he teleported. <laughs> he teleported to the house, and he stabs her. And they recreate oh. the shower, like, the shower scene from Psycho uh-huh. with Michael Myers and Judy Greer, which like, it was a like, fun little nod to like Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. Yeah. But like, that's how it ends. Like Michael Myers can like teleport and like heal now. Oh. And it, I, I was like, I don't think that ending was earned. Yeah. That wasn't, I, I don't know. And Jamie Lee Curtis didn't do anything in the entire movie. Like what a bummer. She cast her check though. Yeah, she, she did. did. And she's having a blast. She is. She is. During her, like, I watched some, like, interviews on TikTok that it showed up, yeah. and I was like, she's just living large. She is. She's just Good happy to be there. Also, we watched Scream. I was about to say, okay, yeah. I remember. Because the- they showed the Scream trailer before Halloween. Okay. I was like, okay, so at least I got to see movie. I see it in the theaters once. Yeah. But yeah, we watched the first Scream. Um, like, I watched it for the first time. Fun, right? Yeah. I'm glad you liked it. I really liked it. Had, that would have been yeah, it climactic <laughs> of me having it up for years. I really like it. I'm really excited. I'm going to watch the, all of the sequels now. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think they're all on HBO Max. Yeah, they are. I'm interested. I think you'll like the third. Okay, a lot of people don't like the third one. But because it's on the movie set, it's, it's, like, yeah. it's kind of like guaranteed it's so to meta. Like it. yeah. it's, it, like If you throw anything on a movie set, we talked yeah. about this before, like, yeah. I'm probably going to like it at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely um, Billy and what's his, what's Matthew Lillard's name? Oh, um, Billy and oh my god, Billy and Billy and wait, Billy and I'm just like Matthew Lillard. Oh my god, Matthew Lillard, yeah. <laughs> they he little definitely a little fruity. That, that, those I feel like are correct. He definitely like maybe not Lillard's maybe name. even like you could go to say like maybe not Billy but yeah. definitely Matthew Lillard's definitely character. Oh, hundred percent. And they implied it. And it, he's so funny in it. Yeah. It's it that it needed that. I think it's good. I think it's really good how they like actually made them like teenager motivations. Yeah, like it is because it's like a, well, like not to get too, super dark, but like it's like when you like ask like um, teenagers now who do like scary things. I won't mm-hmm. get too specific, but like that's literally like their kind of motivations that they have yeah. to do like horrible things like murder and like all this stuff. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. Um. You know, I I don't know. Like I I think. Oh, also, I think like it's good that like you've talked about it a lot, and you like 
I, I know it's kind of more comedic thing. Yeah. So watching it, I kind of watched it kind of like lighthearted. Like I wasn't like, cause you know, like sometimes like when you go to like midsummer, hereditary, you yeah. know, what's going to be fucking scary yeah, yeah. or like us or like get out. Yeah. Like I'm a little scared going into yeah. it, but because like you said, you like told comedy, me yeah. it, like, no, remember when I like just started and I was like, it's not scary. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I've talked about this. I know. I just years. needed the confirmation yeah. as we're going in. No, it literally because, goes dimension films and Kim goes, it's not scary. Right. <laughs> Like, what, do you, what do you think we're watching i don't know i just need to be insured because i went into the mindset of like kind of like watching a comedy movie right and that made it like extra you did good. jump a couple times i jumped once no it was definitely like twice okay i jumped big once okay but yeah one big one but that was like a jump scare it and was. it was in the very beginning but i also okay see how old or old movies like the movies back then they didn't have like jump scares every three seconds yeah. It was like every now and then to really keep you so, up. So, yeah, I think now knowing that, I'll be able to watch 90s like slasher kind of movies yeah. and stuff. Like, they're not too gory either. No, it's not that bad. So, like, I think I can do like 90s movies, like yeah, horror movies, could, yeah. but like, I just don't like the Annabelle, like Conjuring. Like, the I don't possession. like that. I think I can do slasher films. Cause it's people yeah but when you when you add the supernatural in it i'm like woo that is scary because you, you don't understand it but you uh, yeah. can kind of understand like motivation and stuff i like think that. that's what i like about scream that's why i like that, true crime and stuff. yeah like yeah. scream never gets paranormal yeah ever in the entire series and i'm like okay thank god because like yeah. even with like halloween like okay it was a slasher at first but then a lot of like you know how there's like 10 different timelines i think a they lot probably of added paranormal. the supernatural thing because of how popular like probably this, ugh, that's kind of annoying though yeah because it kind of like diminishes the charm of the original yeah interesting it's in it's going to be interesting to yeah. like kind of come like see all of the oh, not all of them but like halloween coming back and the screen coming yeah. back it's going to be really interesting because i think they're going to take it in very different directions yeah. at least i hope also <laughs> the director of how who did the halloween reboots or whatever something Gordon Green, I don't know, but he's doing a Exorcist trilogy, like sequel. So series. now they're rebooting horror movies. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm okay, yeah. There's a new Chucky show. Like, I think I think sometimes for like I think horror you can do that. Yeah, and like and the fans will be okay with it. Yeah, and as long as you're not like, I feel like everybody's doing the supernatural yeah. thing. I think it could work. I think it's also because the draw a lot of the main time it's like the villain, and you can like reestablish the villain in different ways mm -hmm. like how scream had that mtv show yeah that did like okay it did okay yeah um and it didn't have any of the old actors it literally just had you saw that dumois thing yeah that it's, i'm so excited i hope it's real because you never know yeah. dumois they can just say whatever they fucking and it, was, it literally came out of nowhere no one else has i've never heard anything else about that yeah but i think they're probably waiting to green light it until the the re the movie scream 5 January, comes yeah. out probably. i think they're probably gonna wait on it okay yeah i agree i think it'll do well though yeah it like to. they have they have the old people and then they have like dylan minette they have Jen um, ortega. Jen ortega like in the mason Billy gooding yeah i think mason gooding's gonna be a big character i okay let's oh my gosh we are, i already think the by the way i think the killer is gonna be dylan minette i think so too what and so he he gives up I just feel no. You know why? I you know the okay the twist. It wouldn't make sense for Mason Gooding to do no, it. No, but you know the twist where um, like where you realize that Billy is the killer in the first one. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think like who could pull off that kind of like in terms of acting, who can pull off that kind of like. And he needs the three sixty reasons. But I think I genuinely think Dylan Minnette can do that mm -hmm. and look scary. Yeah. And maybe even if like, I it would think, be good for his range, like coming yeah. off of like the the like kind of leading like yeah. character caring boy whatever character yeah. of like 13 reasons to like doing a villain i think you could really like help us project him. Yeah, yeah yeah and i think it would be something he's into yeah he's he's been in the hollow and hornets like four times yeah he is. <laughs> i, I saw see him so many Halloween pictures Hornets. you did well not this year but like oh yeah i think like last or so a year before. oh my gosh his girlfriend's band is really good okay i just need to put that out there the regrets oh okay yeah yeah they're really good yeah i like it I like that they're bringing back like Riot Girl in like a different way. Yeah. Super fun. I stand. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. And now that I'm going to watch like all the screen movies and stuff, I'll be like, I'll be like, not on your level, but like, I'll get it. Yeah. You'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I will become a super fan. Who knows? Maybe. That'd be so interesting. I would, that will be a plot twist of the century. <laughs> I would not see that coming at all. We'll see. Have no. I will see. There's, I have to watch four movies, right? There's four. Two, three, four. No, three. Three more. Three yeah. more. 
but four movies in total. Yeah. Okay. Um, Super excited. Anyways, guys, uh, we have a really fun episode today. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it and put on your... I was going to say thinking caps. No. But I don't know. I don't know. Just put, put on your mocking Jay pins. Good. There we go. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome back from the ad break. Um, we're here with our guest now, Julia. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Thanks for having me, guys. Of course. Okay, so we're all... Wait, were you like a OG Hunger Games stand? Like in... I was like a, f- a fake stan. Oh, okay. You know, like I read the I read the books and I watched the movie, but like I wasn't like deep in it. Okay, you were just you know? kind of there. Yeah, I was okay. like I was like, oh my god, everybody mm-hmm. likes it. I need to be. I'm I have FOMO, mm-hmm. so I need to like know what's going on. And it was still like I wasn't. I will talk about it, but yeah. I was not focusing on the right things. Yeah, <laughs> in the movie, in the book, the movies. Like I, it was literally like surface level, and that was all my little brain could take. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Julie and I were like, we were like stands. Like, I, we both had the, oh, we yeah. had, like the pin. Like, I wore oh, to yeah. school. This pin is literally like it's rusted. It's like it's falling <laughs> apart. It's Same. I gotta see where mine is. It's it's somewhere at home. But no, I literally dressed up as Katniss like for Halloween. Yeah. Like, I was I was a stan. Yeah, I, I love um, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But before we get started into our topic for today, um, I just just so we're honest, we get to know you a little bit. Um, what interests you in film and TV? Like, what made you want to go into this industry? Um, so I always, you know, like grew up definitely being like surrounded by like movies and TV. Like, you know, that was always a big part of my family. Like, we always loved like Pixar movies and stuff. And um, I grew up doing like theater, and that also kind of like I don't know, all those things really like influenced me to want to become a storyteller. And like in high school, I um, started doing like digital media classes, and I was like, wait, I like this like video process. I like this film process. I I, I can do this. So yeah, I kind of stuck with it, and here we are. You know. Yeah, is there is there like a specific part of the industry that you want to go into or are you just where Um, I mean, I'm kind of like honestly, I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out and still trying okay. to like get experience, but definitely maybe thinking like development or like casting or editing or something. So, trying to figure it out, but Yeah, yeah you're also fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's exactly how I figured out that I wanted to go in film too. I was like, what classes do I like? And I was like, I oh, literally yeah. only like my digital media class. Right. Yeah, exactly. So and just like that process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what made you choose this topic? And like, how do you think that like ties into, um, I mean, like going into the career that you want to? Yeah. Um, I mean, it definitely the hunger games i feel like was again like a big influence on my storytelling too like i was an avid reader growing up and like hunger games is definitely like one of my favorite books and one of my favorite stories that i just absolutely like loved so i definitely felt like this topic was like important to me and i was like okay i think this is this is great so yeah like i loved the books loved the movies i thought the movies were like so underrated too i don't know i just i love them and i feel like they kind of got like shoved into this like category that they're you're just like oh like you yeah, don't you know, like books into movies or whatever but when there's a lot more there you know that i yeah. feel like people didn't really like pay attention to as much as they should have so yeah so yeah they definitely yeah, they were, the, they were the ones who who started the whole like ya mm-hmm. dystopia trend yeah, yeah. Um, exactly no one no one did it as well as they did oh no, because- that's so true because like we'll get into it but like this shit is a lot deeper than yeah like it like really parallels like how america is yeah and, like how the world yeah. is wherefore i feel like as like divergent and like ones like that they just kind of like just went full fantasy yeah like they, i'm sure yeah, that, obviously there's gonna be things that you can like pull from but like hunger mm-hmm. games was like really that bitch i think also oh, it was yeah was that like um with like divergent and those they focus on the romance kind of like how twilight did but the <laughs> mm-hmm. hunger games the romance was just there yeah and it was not yeah. the main plot at all it was just like also like who's there like it wasn't like there yeah. was no team gail or team pita even though people made it like that like that wasn't really like right. no exactly i, mean, I was gonna it yeah, was, was like, gonna talk about it like yeah. who cares about gail yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> like boring Fuck. yeah yeah there's just like so many different layers to it definitely yeah um mm-hmm. All right, so before we get started, I found a BuzzFeed quiz. Um, so there was a couple different ones. There's so many. But yeah. I felt like this one was, like, what Hunger Games character are you? Uh-huh. Because okay. there's also, like, like, what district are you? But I feel like... I just took it. I got District 2. 
What's that one? It's like the oh. mining one or something. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's like... Okay. And it was like, you're bold. <laughs> and I was like, okay. You're Please. like, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So I was like, it's not like Harry Potter where like, it's like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be... It's not like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, we're going to do what Hunger Games character are you most like? Okay. I don't have any guesses. If anything, I'm going to be like the old lady from like the third one. The old lady. <laughs> from when they did like the Aww. all-stars. The <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, pick a word that best describes you. Sweet, creative, dependable, cunning, assertive, determined, surprising, or sarcastic. I'm always like so make... bad at making like decisions with this stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna be determined. Okay. I've been on my girl bossing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can't tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, which one are you gonna pick? Um, I guess I'll say sweet, you know, okay. I think. Yeah. You are sweet. You are very nice. <laughs> You're thanks. probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, I try. <laughs> I'm going to do, um, I would hope I'm dependable. So let's do that one. Okay. Oh, okay. no. Yeah. The, the, the reaction you just gave me. <laughs> just kidding. We're, we're going to go to sarcastic. We're going to go to sarcastic. Yeah, there you go. Kim literally, Kim literally <laughs> went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have not been girl bossing in this retrograde. That's true. Yeah. I'm also late. I am have not been on time for anything in the past ten years. So <laughs> that. no, that's what I was saying. I was like, I was about to, I wasn't gonna air you out like that, but like But like I just yeah. you were like, anyway. maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, pick a weapon. <laughs> oh, okay. Slingshot, trident, bare hands, bone arrow, gun, no weapons, please. Anything I can grab. I think this means in the Hunger Games, like yeah. in this. Yeah. Scenario. Um, I feel like all of these are like way too close, so I think I'm gonna do bow and arrow because I can keep I'm my gonna, distance. Yeah, I'm gonna do bow and arrow too. I tried doing bow and arrow in like sixth grade camp. I could <laughs> not do it. I don't have the coordination for it, so I was like, yeah, no. Um, I think yeah. I could handle something like a trident because it's <laughs> right. like like my size. So like I yeah, feel like true. I can handle That's it. A good point. Yeah. Um, I, I, no gun. I, I don't know how to use that. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> Guns in the Hunger Games. No, but like no. Wait, I don't. No, I don't think so. No. Think so, yeah. Mm-mm. All right, what are you good at? <laughs> <laughs> Painting, swimming, organizing, sneaking slash hiding, planning, mm. aiming, comforting, speaking. I'll tell you what I'm not good at. <laughs> planning. <laughs> yeah, I, I will that. not be picking that one. Um, I'm, I'm really good at not good at painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at swimming. I'm really bad at swimming. Really? Yeah, like I. I, like, when I went to Hawaii, like, I had to stay, like, you know, have you ever been to Waikiki? No. Okay, but, like, okay, if you ever go there, if you go to the beach, like, they have, like, these, like, they, like, they're, like, man-made, like, blocks of, like, I don't know what it is, but they, like, stop, they break the the waves. Yeah, they break the waves, and so it's, like, kind of, like, a wave, like, it's just, like, a, it's, like, a pool, essentially, but it's just the ocean. Yeah, um, they have that, and then they have the regular ocean. And like when Darby and I went to the regular ocean, I was like fighting for my fucking life. Oh my god, it's <laughs> no. scary! Like the tides are scary. <laughs> no, like and then like there was one where like the water was like super choppy, and I was like, I was having fun, but also I'm like, I can't go further than like I could, like I couldn't go further than like I had to like have my feet on the ground. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, you were like, nope. <laughs> yeah, you were like, I will not be like waiting. No, because yeah. Darby was going far, and I was she's no, like, really? and me. I was like, N- I can't. I'm so scared. <laughs> You're like, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm okay. What I, what I am good at, I think, is speaking. I think I'm good okay. at that. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. One. I think I'll say comforting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say speaking too, but I don't want to do. You can do it. One. We pick different ones for those. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a podcast, so no, <laughs> we each have two. So yeah. Um. All right. How would your head? Oh my god. How would your? Oh my god. How would your <laughs> friends describe you? Caring, brave, sophisticated, ambitious, shy, generous, humorous, emotional. <laughs> mm, I could, I could be like three of these. Okay. Wait. Same. <laughs> Caring, brave, I don't think I'm sophisticated. <laughs> ambitious, <laughs> shy, generous, humorous, emotional. I'm going to say ambitious for you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to say... Gonna... Oh, yeah. No, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think caring, although sometimes I, I can be emotional. <laughs> I was going to say caring for you. Okay, I'll say okay, caring. caring. And then Kim, wait, sophisticated, shy, generous. I was going to say ambitious, but also I think humorous. Huh. Which one do you want? I'll take humorous. Okay. 
No, literally, yeah, I, did, I, like, both I, I did like a little, a little talk at SDSU, and I felt like I was doing a comedy set. A stand up? No, I, I literally felt like I was doing <laughs> stand up. Because I was oh like building God. up, I just felt within myself, build up the joke, and then I was like, Punchline. okay, delivery. Yeah. And then the yeah. laugh. And I was like, this is really good. So do you it's feel so like so Marvelous funny. Mrs. Maisel vibes? Or you're like, no. I can do stand up. <laughs> yeah, I am her. Yeah. I am Mrs. I love Maisel. That. <laughs> Which I wouldn't be mad about because because he is fine. Mr. Basil okay. is fine. I mean, I know that they they don't end up here, but well, yeah, I haven't finished this story yet, so okay. I don't know. Oh, what's your greatest <laughs> flaw? <laughs> I'm very serious. People sometimes don't take me seriously. I have a short temper. I'm very sensitive. My daring nature sometimes leads me to trouble. I'm impatient. I'm hard to please. I'm very dramatic. Oh my god. Where do we start? Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely dramatic and hard to please. <laughs> I don't think I'm hard to please, but I think I'm dramatic and sensitive. Mm-hmm. I so think. Just for, I, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was gonna say yeah. I feel like I'm dramatic and sensitive too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also okay. I definitely don't have a short temper. That one, I'm. I think no, I can get frustrated, but like I can handle it. Yeah. Um, I'm not serious. Sometimes people don't take me serious. Okay, I'm gonna go with um, I'm very sensitive. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna say I'm dramatic. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll say I'm hard to please. Okay. There we go. <laughs> How do you? It's handle- so true though. Like I'm thinking about it and I'm like, yeah. Like if somebody gives me something and I don't like it, I'm like, how do I tell them that I don't want this? Don't want this. <laughs> it's so bad, and the anxiety is just as like, yeah. oh fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, how do you handle stressful situations? Focus. I don't. Joke around. Distract myself. Drink. Strategize. Talk it out. Pace it out. Okay, Joe Brown. Oh. Uh, that's the only way for me to do it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I mean, I guess it depends. In like my wise? life, I just oh, distract yeah. myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. But like in like work settings, obviously I'm going to strategize because I have to deal with it. But that's part of it. Like you're distracting yourself. Okay. So yeah, I think that works, Julia. The version. Yeah, I was going to say like, why is my first reaction? Like, I don't. <laughs> but literally like... <laughs> <laughs> well, probably, I would just say, I think, like, distract myself or strategize, probably. Okay. I would okay. say, like, strategize. Mm-hmm. What's the best way to survive the Hunger Games? I have thought about this extensively. Mm. Um, go alone, get sponsors, I don't know, make friends, make secret weapons, try to avoid attacking, watch previous victors' games and learn from them, and plan to attack other tributes. I would get sponsors. That would literally be my main focus from the second that I get picked to the second I'm in there. In, even while yeah. I'm in there. That would be my main focus. So I'm going to say get sponsors. Okay. Um, I think I'll say, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe make friends. Oh. You know, having allies could help. Or like yeah. having allies could help. I don't know. That's so hard. Because it's obviously like all these things are necessary yeah. in that situation. I just know I wouldn't survive. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> what... I guess try to avoid attacking. Like, just stay every, out of everyone's mind. Maybe okay, they'll forget works. about me. Yeah. They just don't. They're like, oh, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> just go works. hide. <laughs> yeah. Or okay. play dead. I don't know. <laughs> you lay on the ground. <laughs> You'll be like, I'm over <laughs> here. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. How would you describe your style? Unique and bright. Simple yet stylish. Formal. Dark and pretty. <laughs> cute. Sophisticated. Basic. Casual. Hmm. Um, unique and bright. Okay. Not not today. But yeah, but, but we're on theme. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say simple yet stylish. Mm. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Julia, I think I'll say want? cute. Okay. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Who would you choose as an ally? Wait. I can. That I like, no. Like I just have flashbacks. Like seeing these flashbacks. characters. Oh my god. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Kato, Clove, Glimmer, Thresh. Marvel or Fox? This face. is so easy. Someone no? else or no? I work alone. Uh, oh. Thresh, he saved yeah. Katniss. Yeah, Thresh. Oh, <gasps> yeah. You already got yours. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I would pick Thresh. I think I'd pick Fox. Oh my God, Fox face. Because okay, I think cool. if she She's had, sneaky. I think if she had been with someone, she would have made it a lot further. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, I got mine, Julia. Okay, pick? I think I'm gonna say Thresh too. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got yeah. my answer. Wait, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you go. Okay, so I got Finnick. Oh, um, Finnick is the best character. I, I love yes, Finnick. Yeah. Is. Um, congrats! You're most similar to Finnick. You're charismatic and witty, and you always know what to say. You care deeply for the people you love, and would do pre- 
Oh, would do pretty much everything for them. The people who know you love being around you. What? The people who know you love being around yeah. you because of your friendliness and caring nature. You're also very talented and have a lot of different interests. You're selfless enough to put your loved ones in front of yourself. Okay. okay. Oh, I love that. Thank there you, you go. <laughs> go ahead, Julia. <laughs> I got cat news. Should I read the oh, okay. description? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it says, congrats. You're most similar to cat news every day. And you can sometimes be stubborn and serious, but you do know how to have fun with your dearest friends. Your strong beliefs motivate you and make you determined or make you the determined, focused person that you are. Although you aren't the most social person, you feel comfortable next to your friends and care about them deeply. You realize you have to sometimes make sacrifices to get to your goal and you can handle the sacrifices really well. Interesting. Right. Whoa. Uh, you, okay. Wait, really? Oh, nice. I love it. Do you guys agree with that? Do you guys think Buffy did a good job? Out of all the characters, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah, same. Yeah, especially like when we get into like Katniss, uh, like how Katniss is as like written as a character. I yeah. feel like I deeply resonate. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, how fun! That was so fun. Okay, um, so let's get started. Um, so today's episode, we kind of called it "How Hunger, How the Hunger Games Revolutionized Revolutionized Generation." I thought of this during quarantine when I was rewatching all the movies, and I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Like, this is, this is a lot. Um, and so uh, we're just going to kind of go through, like, sort of the history of the Hunger Games franchise, like, from the beginning to, I guess, like, currently how it is um, and, like, the impact that it had. Um, so the first book was released on September 14th, 2008, and then the other two books came out a year after. So Catching Fire was released in 2009 and Mockingjay in 2010. And then there was a prequel that actually came out last year, um, which that's did she, you read it? Like did either I, of you yeah, read yeah. it? I read it. It was really mm-hmm. good. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so amazing. different. Oh, hundred percent. It's like she really. I think she really like was like. Well, these people are older now, so let's give mm-hmm. them a little more. Like, I don't know. Like, I think she understood that. Like, the readers are older now, so they're not gonna yeah. resonate the same with the way that the books were before because they were definitely YA, mm-hmm. and I think this was a lot more mature. Mm. Oh, definitely. And, like, it was interesting to see the earlier kind of days of, like, the history of kind of Snow's, like, backstory and just all of that. Like, it makes everything... He created it, right? No. He he was, like, Mm -hmm. um... He's, like... It was, like, the 15th ones, right? Or what? In the book? It's, like, one of the earlier ones. It was definitely one of, like, the earlier ones, and it was really different compared to, like, what Katniss ends up going through. Like, it was a lot... I mean, obviously, all of it's, like, brutal, but it was, like, whoa. Like, it was darker, I think, in a way. Like, it was definitely more mature. Yeah. And it's, like, um, Snow was, like, a sponsor. So he he was kind of, like, what um, Hamish was. Um, And that was kind of, like, the storyline. Yeah, he was kind of, like, a mentor. Yeah. I'm, and they're already making their movie, so I'm really excited to see who they're going to cast as young presidents now. Yeah. Me That's too. So um, mm-hmm. But anyways, oh, so, fun. yeah. Um, so I was looking into, Well, because like, you know, like, how sometimes, like, when they do prequels and yeah. it just doesn't hit the same? Or it's, like, it's a super yeah. random character that it's, like, hmm? I When I first heard about it, I was like, I don't want a prequel about President Snow. And then I read it, and yeah. I was like, oh, I get it. Like, it makes sense why mm-hmm. she picked this character. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Well, also, and I think, like... Oh, sorry. <laughs> in the videos I watched or something like that. Well, also when I was younger, I didn't really understand what he was. Yeah. Like I understood that he was like the president and stuff like that. But like, I was like, why do we hate him so much again? I was like, obviously <laughs> yeah. like, it's bad that he's doing the Hunger Games, but like, I don't know much about this guy and I yeah. don't hate him. Yeah. I, if anything, I hate he's Gale. He's like charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> more than right. I hate presidents though. So I think that's, um, I mean, if he's like the villain in all of like four movies, it kind of makes sense to like add backstory to the yeah. villain. Like, cause you know how like Disney, they, I don't know if you guys know this actually, <laughs> but like Disney does like, well, I guess they do make movies about the villains and yeah, stuff, yeah. but they, before <laughs> they did that, they had like books about the oh, villains yeah, yeah. that are different than the movies. Oh, yeah. They don't like, don't mm-hmm. coincide like at all. <laughs> but, yeah. And they're also kind of like a little It's like, like wicked. Sexy. <laughs> it's like wicked for Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think, I always think that's really interesting because yeah. like, I think we've talked about that before and like horror and stuff like when we talk about horror and stuff like how um people identify with villains and yeah. stuff like that it's always just so interesting like, how did they end up there why are they like so evil yeah like what got them there I feel like that's yeah. Yeah. super interesting okay also yeah. that's why people like true crime and shit like it just yeah. it all makes sense yeah it does. <laughs> oh Julie I don't know if you okay I don't know if I was like making this up in my head but there was like fruity vibes from President Snow with that one yes guy. but like yeah no, in the, in the prequel. 
in the prequel. Mm-hmm. There's like another male character that he. Oh yeah! Like, oh my gosh, his uh, his really good friend. Like, what is? His yeah. Name? Oh my. God. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, definitely. There's it's something like, here. Yeah, yeah, and it was, was it was really interesting, definitely to like see his backstory because it's like it makes yeah. everything just makes sense. Like yeah. by the time it gets to the end, you're like, okay, now I see why he is like the way he is, and it's yeah. just yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm excited that they like are bringing on this same team for the movie too, yeah. which is like oh, yeah. really good news. And so hopefully it'll be very like similar and like, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I hope they, I want to be, I want more Hunger Games content. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I just want more. Now I, I like want to reread the prequel. Cause now I'm trying to, I can't even like remember like his friend's name. You're, cause you're sorry. I'm, like, <laughs> I don't remember either. Um, <laughs> yeah. I need to reread it. It was Anyways, really good. yeah, I guess we'll, we'll have more to talk about that once the movie comes out and like casting news and everything because I think they just started production. So um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm excited to see that. Um, but so I was looking into like the books and kind of uh, like Suzanne Collins, who wrote them, like kind of her inspiration and how she structured the books. Um, so I actually found out today, which I didn't even realize, I don't because I haven't read the books in such a long time, that um, each book in the Hunger Games trilogy has three sections of nine chapters each. And so she said that this format comes from her playwriting background. Um, which is like the three-act structure that we also learn about like as film majors. Um, yeah. And so she saw like each group of nine chapters as a separate part of the story. Um, mm-hmm. And those like divisions are like act breaks. So oh. she, she, it was like a play, like one big like, play, which I think is a really interesting way to look at it. That is really yeah. nice. I, right? I was like, oh, this is so easy to read. Like, cause you yeah. know how like mm-hmm. sometimes the chapters are too long and yeah. you're like, you want to finish a chapter, but you're like, I can't fucking finish this yeah. chapter. It's too yeah. fucking long. I always appreciated that it was like a great it, amount of like pages yeah. to like get through. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, her mind. Yeah, oh god, yeah. She's I love a that. national treasure. Oh, oh definitely. I love Susan Collins. Um, wow. And also like the way that she said she was inspired kind of by um, Greek mythology um, mm-hmm. and also like reality TV. Mm-hmm. Those were kind of have like her two main inspirations. I love her. You can um, definitely yeah. see that. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's so many interviews and, like, stuff where uh, you can read into, like, how she came up with this concept and what she was, like, really trying to say. Um, but we don't have time to cover all that. Um, so the first movie released on March 23rd, 2012. Um, and by the time the first film adaptation of The Hunger Games was released, the publisher had reported over 26 million Hunger Games trilogy books in print, including movie tie-in books. I remember, okay, you know those scholastic, like, it was like the little pamphlet with like four pages and you could yeah. like check off books you wanted and you like mm-hmm. order them and they give you to the, okay, I love yeah. that. And they had mm-hmm. a set and it was like the three books and the pin. And I was oh, like, yeah, I, they I totally didn't know anything did. about it. And I was like, uh-huh. mom, <laughs> I like, want okay. these. Yeah, and I'm so glad I got them because I literally loved it so much. I wore it to school. I was like, this is my favorite thing ever. And, right. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think it, so yeah, I think I discovered in like sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Like right when it was hmm. coming out I don't remember what year that was but when did you guys yeah. first how did you discover the Hunger Games um I think I'm from what I remember like I started reading it because like you know other people were mm-hmm. reading it about like the same like age and like yeah I literally just remember like wearing my J pin to school in like fifth or sixth grade or something like that and yeah and I just I don't know I really like fell in love with the story and mm-hmm. I just yeah it's it was just so good and definitely really like influenced my storytelling Mm-hmm. yeah and i loved i feel like i love the movies like just the same you know yeah. i wasn't disappointed by the movies at all um i i think at that time like i was if something was coming out like on tv or something like pretty little liars i read all the pretty little liars oh books yeah yeah oh read, yeah and then like you know fallen our stars like all those things like i if i heard the movie was coming out i wanted to read the book before i watched the movie yeah Definitely. Um, so that's why I watched. It. I would. I, I used to it. do that too, but I, I, I like it the other way around now. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. same. Because like I feel like it, when you read you the book, you get disappointed. Yeah. By how much yeah. you have to cut out. Yeah. You know. But then mm-hmm. when you read the book after watching it, it's like the director's cut. It's like the Snyder yeah, cut. No, yeah. That's yeah. That's a good point too. That's really. That's good. a good and way so to put think, it. Yeah. And it's sometimes like it makes me compare. more angrier than other yeah. times. Like the. That's the, also true. Yeah, because like. 
um, to all the boys I loved before. Oh. <laughs> somehow oh I God. always bring up this fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, it's like in every like, episode. I know, I, somehow I always bring up this I fucking movie. That. But, like, the book is so much more juicier than the movie, yeah. guys. Like, really? if you love a little tea and an easy-ass read, like, literally, I finished it, I think, in a day. Uh-huh. Like, Ooh. just go to your local library and get to all the boys I loved yeah. before. Yeah, like, that's if how the like, other books are, too. Mm-hmm. The Summer I Turned Pretty series, that's how those are. Mm-hmm. Like, but then, like crazy rich Asian. Asians, it's just like it's even more like world building. It, in fact, yeah. maybe it's a little bit too hard to follow because there's so many fucking characters. Mm-hmm. Like there's a literal like family like like tree. chart, oh, and it's God. like the biggest family tree I've ever fucking seen in my life. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like I Dang. literally, it took me so long to get through that book because I was like, my brain is not comprehend. I need pictures. That's why I think Crazy Rich Asians is a good book to read after as well, mm-hmm. so you can like visually like think about the person oh okay yeah and if there oh, yeah. isn't a person then you're like okay they like take that person out it helps mm-hmm. a lot i couldn't have, like mm-hmm. imagine how many people read crazy rich asians before and they have to like think up a fucking character like i couldn't do that i'm very much happy picturing constance yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah definitely yeah mm-hmm. interesting um so yeah like the movie came out in 2012 and my world was rocked um, <laughs> it rocked a lot of people's yeah. world <laughs> yeah um Kim actually has a story time about how they acquired the movie rights. Um, okay. I mean, okay. Kind of. It's not her story it's time. It's not my like, story time. Yeah. But the reason I was like, oh, we should talk about movie rights is because my like one and only flex is that <laughs> I interned for the company that um, produced or got the rights to make Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they're, yeah. making, mm-hmm. they're making the new one as well. Um, and... I thought it was just it was like literally the whole like office had like a bunch of Hunger Games stuff like oh, all the like crazy. portraits and stuff like that and like it was really cool and like they they uh, specifically do book to movie yeah. or mm-hmm. book to TV um, and I think it's just a really cool company because you know how like a lot of companies they try to pitch a bunch of shit yeah. and like just try to do everything they, they like focus on like one to two things like their like bar is like super high yeah. so when the book oh, wow, gets picked yeah. like it's a high honor, I feel yeah. like, because Definitely. I remember I read so many books while I was there, and I was like, wow, like, it is really hard to, like, find a good book to, like, adapt, mm-hmm. because there are so many books, but it doesn't mean that they're good. Yeah, not everything <laughs> yeah. can adapt. Um, yeah, not everything works. Mm-hmm. But I remember when I was, like, um, looking into the company, I was like, that's also a good tip, if you're, like, a film person, yeah. like, look, like, yes, Lionsgate is the one that gets, like, all the cred, but like look at the like smaller one like the smaller production company and look Mm -hmm. them up to see if they're doing internships yeah because like for example like i wouldn't have known color force was a thing but also if you look on movie posters i have a crazy rich asians poster and they did crazy rich asians too and like on the bottom it has the color force logo okay and i was like okay i think the harder game one might have it i think think it does because i had it on my wall like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. So that's a good tip for you people that are like looking for internships in yeah. film and TV. Like, look at the smaller company because more likely than not, they're also looking for interns. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like a really big battle <laughs> to like get the distribute or the rights to the movie. And um, I guess like Nina Jacobson, well, she r- co-runs it now, but she was like the mm-hmm. original owner um she is so interesting like google her she is so fucking interesting and like a girl boss central um (laughs) and so she literally made like pirates of the caribbean happen at disney oh yeah like she's iconic game plan like she is deeply iconic um that's crazy wow and so she was like in the thing and i guess she resonated with like the way that she wanted to like make the movies resonated with suzanne collins and so she mm-hmm. got it for like a stupid amount of money. Like two hundred thousand dollars is nothing. Mm-hmm. If wow. like rights to like a franchise. Like yeah. she bought that shit for two hundred. Yeah, Imagine how much money. Like it just the first movie gross I d I can't read numbers. Okay. Six hundred and ninety-four point <laughs> okay. four million worldwide. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's just like, the first one. And that's just the first one. Um Thanks. and then Lionsgate picked it up to distribute. Yeah. So mm-hmm. How insane. Yeah. Like, that is so insane to me that she got it for that little money. Like, it sounds like it is a lot of money mm-hmm. for, like, regular people. But, like, yeah. when you think in terms of, like, the entertainment industry, like, I, I should have looked up, like, how much, like, Divergent or something, like, went for. Mm, because yeah. mm-hmm. I, that is, is like, everyone's like, that's crazy. That's <laughs> that she got yeah, that's for that, like, amount of money. Yeah. 
And I mean, like, I guess it worked out like they produced all four of the movies mm-hmm. and then they're going to produce the last yeah. one. Well, because I think an- another interesting thing about Color Force was in her in an interview I read about her, she was saying, like, I don't make a movie unless I like the book myself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. really important. And for sure. I feel like a hot take for some reason in Hollywood, because I feel like when you get to like an executive level, you're running your own production company. You just kind of like are like, yeah, whatever. Like just yeah. as long as it's making money. But the yeah, fact that she takes the just time. To do it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So as you can tell, I enjoyed <laughs> working there. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Um, yeah, but that was okay. Good review from Kim. Yeah. Um, kind of the Yeah. And so right after they got the distribution rights, um, it was time to cast like the three main characters and like, everyone else. But like the three main characters are always like the big, mm-hmm. it's like, who's going to play them. Um, mm-hmm. and I agree they did a good casting job because, okay. So in the book, Katniss is described as having gray eyes, dark, straight hair and olive toned skin. So they did whitewash Katniss. Yeah, that did happen. Yeah. I was watching a video and they were like, "This is what hungry." They like read the description from the book and then like showed the character. Yeah. And then I remember the video I was watching. They're like, "Yeah, um, Jennifer Florence does have all of skin." I was like, "What? Yeah, no, she does <laughs> no. not." The fact that they said that in the video, I was like, "Huh?" That's not all. Yeah, no. Yeah, she was not. Anybody needs to know all of skin is like, like Oscar Isaac, like Pedro yeah. Pascal, like. Mm-hmm. that's kind of olive skin like they're fairer but they still have like the tan undertones yeah yeah Jennifer Lawrence is white <laughs> and the reason that like um Suzanne Suzanne Collins mentioned that is because the 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 districts like as you go down the list they get like more and more like poorer mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. that she wanted to show um like the racial undertones of that and so yeah. how the capital was like mainly white people and that kind of thing um mm-hmm. so I do think we lose a little bit of that with Katniss being white Mm-hmm. But also Jennifer Lawrence is so good. Yeah. That I'm like, yeah, well, I can't amazing. see her anyone else as Katniss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like we'll allow it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe when they remake <laughs> it in like 20 years, they'll they'll fix it. Maybe <laughs> maybe 10, honestly. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, Jennifer Lawrence plays um Katniss Everdeen and then Josh Richardson plays PETA. I also like that, but I think it's so funny that they would not let him be short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like they would they were like, he cannot be short. Like they literally had him stand on stuff. Yeah. That's insane yeah. to me. Yeah, uh, that's and hilarious. then um, Liam Hemsworth as Gail. Great casting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I really like it. It says Kim will read off the other actors. Yeah. That considered. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. Haley Steinfeld, Abigail. For Katniss? Yeah, for Katniss, obviously. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, Haley Steinfeld, Abigail Breslin, Emma Roberts, Sersha Ronan, Chloe Grace Moretz. Troyan Belisario. Oh my God! What oh. There's more people. And Shailene Woodley as well. And oh. there's other people, but they're like, I don't know who those are. So mm. that's. I thought that was inter- that they're all white. First yeah. of all, every single person that's on this list is white. Also, Haley Steinfeld was like a literal baby in 2011. She's our. Yeah. She's our. She's my age, I think. She was. I can't see I any. I especially can't see Emma Roberts as Katniss. No. Yeah. yeah. Really interesting. Um, for yeah. Peta, Alexander Ludwig, oh, um, okay. Evan Peters, <laughs> oh my God, Lucas Till. Oh. One of these things is not like the others, and it's Josh Hutcherson. <laughs> <laughs> like I could categorize Alexander Ludwig, Lucas Till, and Evan Peters, and like because they're like they're actually blonde. Yeah. I think that's the mm-hmm. thing is like Josh Hutcherson have to like dye his hair because in the books he's, he's, blonde, like, yeah. he's blonde. Yeah, and also like I feel like those guys are like buffer in a they way. are buffer mm-hmm. you know so and that's not how cute it is he's a little soft. yeah yeah <laughs> he's, he's, he's a baby boy. yeah he's oh, baby yeah. okay <laughs> and then um <laughs> uh for gail this one's interesting okay david henry david oh, wait, henry oh. and robbie amell i understand why they consider yeah, them yeah, i understand <laughs> and i don't agree yeah at all in fact, I'm glad they did not go with also, that. Also, yeah, definitely. Not like, not like Liam Hemsworth at all. Like, I would not categorize those three men together. Actually, like, I, I could mm-hmm. say I could see David Henry yeah. and Robbie Amell, but not, I wouldn't put Liam Hemsworth in the same category. They went with yeah. very different people. Yeah, definitely very exactly. different. Also, just a shout out to Hamish really quick. Mm-hmm. John C. Riley was in talks. You know who that is? The guy from Yes, Southers. wait, I would have really liked that. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, honestly, I would have been okay with that. Yeah, he mm-hmm. like I love when comedic actors do like really serious. Stuff. Well, I think like Steve Carell kills 
dramatic. Yeah, I think the uh, the character of Hamish had to be played by a comedian. Yeah, yeah. So but that they also, could land like those kind of circles. But Woody Harrelson's really yeah. funny. Yeah, he is funny. And he's that's why great. I'm saying, like, and, yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Woody Harrelson was com- considered a comedian, but I think well, he's, he, he's good at funny. He got roles. introduced mm-hmm. to us. Like, I don't think anybody our age knew who Woody Harrelson was no. until no. Hunger Games. <laughs> so good for him. Or like, oh my God. Because what's... I think it helped him with his like second run of his mm-hmm. career because now he's done so many things. Yeah. <laughs> I, he is very talented, but yeah. I do think that's why like people like our age yeah. get excited when we see mm-hmm. Woody Harrelson, which I don't think would have It introduced him to the next generation. Yeah. So now he can, yeah. For yeah. sure. I agree. Yeah, um, I feel like honestly with everyone in the movie, like I feel like I can't see anybody different like playing these roles. Like I feel yeah. like I personally thought the casting was like spot on. Like everyone yeah. was like meant to be in those roles, you mm-hmm. know? Like everyone was like a stupid good actor. Yeah. Like I don't think yeah. anybody sucked. No, it wasn't honestly, like a team yeah. movie. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel yeah. like you're watching a team movie. It feels like you're watching like a high production drama. Yeah, like I right? hate to keep comparing it to Divergent, but if you look at Divergent, it's, like yeah. The acting in that is like the acting was like mm, yeah fuck? like Ooh. Loki giving soap opera yeah you know I mean? yeah Definitely. Where it I was feel not like, on like the same level at all yeah like, you this know? felt like an actual like this could be actually fucking happening yeah like, a parallel universe. yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I totally believe it yeah okay yeah wait, I don't know if okay the first time I ever was like into like casting news was mm-hmm. when they were casting for Finnick and oh, I, oh yeah. yeah i remember i was on that i was like i was like yeah. okay who was gonna, and i remember so drawing herself i wanted to be finnick so bad. i remember that oh my god i remember that on twitter <laughs> oh my god yeah. he had us tweeting funny. about it That's- <laughs> 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 hmm. i like joy herself but i like, do i i like joy herself no. but how weird would it have been to have a youtuber in like a big brand that would be like so that. yeah that's too weird. like meta in a way Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's too much. Definitely yeah. too meta. <laughs> it would have taken us out of it also, I think. It just isn't For work. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, the actor, what's, it, what's his name, Sam? Hoffman. So good. Mm-hmm. Amazing. 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. So handsome as well. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> casting for these movies, incredible. I don't know who does the <laughs> casting, but 10 out of 10 for you. Um, no, they literally need to make a casting Oscar. Yeah. Or like a casting That's award. That's true. Like, at like the independent spirit or something yeah Maybe they do a little section them. that's but, so true because yeah. like casting makes or breaks everything yeah you know exactly they Dang. carry it all on their back yeah mm-hmm. anyways <laughs> um so the movie premiered in 2012 and it kind of made everyone like overnight stars um mm-hmm. i wrote this yeah, yeah yeah i said i feel like the most famous person young person before was josh hutcherson I and i think it's interesting because he's like the least famous out of the three now yeah, Actually, no, I think I I would feel like Kim and Josh and Liam Hemsworth are kind of like same level to me. Yeah, they haven't acted yeah. too much. After. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, he has what like... has Liam Hemsworth been in recently? Uh... He does like action movies. He's like an action star. Oh yeah, um, that's why I don't know. <laughs> Josh Hutcherson. Yeah, same. Does he like... had the the TV show. Yeah, the Hulu show. Yeah, I think it's so. Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh wait, what show? Yeah, it's like a time. He's a jal- show. janitor and time travels. Oh yeah, I don't know what it's called. Okay, it's, it's like a it's like a comedy. I don't remember what it's called, but it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good for Josh. Yeah, I hope he's enjoying it. <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of doing what like Daniel Radcliffe is doing. That's true. Yes. You know, yeah, so yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Good for him. Yeah. Also, mm-hmm. wait. As long as he's working, I'm happy for. Okay, him. this is yeah, the only time I will ever be able to tell the story on the podcast. But <laughs> my mom almost got into car into a car accident with Josh Hutcherson when oh, we were at the what? Grove. <laughs> What? So like it was my birthday and my family came up to LA and we we went to the Grove to go eat at the um. Have you told me this story before? I don't oh think so. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. I don't, no, I think I did. Okay, but, just yeah, yeah. And maybe so come back to me. Um, like right before you get onto the Grove, it's kind of like where the um the CBS studios are, like James Corden mm-hmm. and like the Late Late Show. Okay, mm-hmm. so we were going in this way, and my mom has we hadn't been to the Grove before yet, and mm-hmm. she was driving, and so like we I don't know in LA the left turns are not protected. No. And so it's not great. It's so stupid. It's so annoying. And yeah. so we were going in this way and we were about to turn into this. Um, it wasn't like, um, I don't think we we're supposed to be there, honestly. But there, it, there was a way for us to turn there. And so mm-hmm. we were about to, my mom gets in like the little thing to turn and then she starts turning and there's another car like coming straight towards us. And I'm like, mommy, you're going to hit that car. <laughs> and so I looked, because I every time I'm like almost in a car accident, which is often, I look to see if the driver is mad. Because I don't like when people, I don't like when people are mad at me. So yeah. I turned and I'm like, oh my God, let's see if he's mad. And I'm like, that's Josh Hutcherson. Oh my God. That's literally Josh mad? Hutcherson. That's wild. He did not care. He had like a Jeep. He was wearing like little sunglasses. No, I feel like he's so calm. Yeah. 
Didn't, like, didn't even care. I was like, was like just another was day in life. Thing. Yeah, I was like, did anyone see that? Did anyone see that? <laughs> That's and, crazy. Yeah, I was like, oh, happy birthday to me. I was got hit by a car by Josh Hutcherson. Can I wish it would happen? That would have been funny. God, you need to like write because you know how like like someone will suggest like two truths on a line. You need to write that down in your app. Oh my to, like, god, that would be a great facts. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just start storing two truths in the line. Yeah. No, I think I think we all need to start doing that because sometimes like when you're put on the spot like that, it's like suddenly you've never had an experience in your life. Yeah. Right. It's so hard way. to think of anything, and you just forget yeah. everything. And you're like, wait, oh no. That's a good one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anyways, I just felt like this Me was the too. only moment I could ever mention that. On Honestly, this yeah. Like Never. I couldn't imagine another way Josh Hutcherson would be mentioned. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, you also mentioned that like it's interesting that in the book it's Katniss's point of view. Oh yeah, I forgot to read that. Yeah, but in the <laughs> movies we do get other. She she's the, we mainly follow her, but we do get like scenes with other characters that she's not and in, we get to see how they yeah. do the game yeah like yeah. how like uh-huh. they send the dogs and how they like press the button mm-hmm. to start the fire and yeah like i was obsessed yeah with that. It's so yeah fun. that was interesting not for to them. See. Yeah. yeah no but i really liked the set design oh my god also the set design mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. everything in the hunger games yes 10 out of 10 yeah Definitely. wow but like um the game maker room i remember like i love the setup of that and i do think it influenced things like even like Squid Game and that kind of stuff. Like I know that was mm. like Korean, but like mm-hmm. that kind of setup. Yeah, it's definitely like influenced a lot of media. Yeah, just like the dystopian, yeah. like holograms and everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and like the definitely. the one person that's in charge, like watching with like the I don't know. It, it definitely feel like mm-hmm. it like influenced a lot of media. Mm-hmm. For um, sure. Did Cabin in the Woods come out after this movie? It was around the same time. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Because Captain in the Woods, like, does that, too. Yeah, okay. and Chris Hemsworth was in that one. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, oh, talk about yeah. it, the brothers. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. And, okay, so the fan base for The Hunger Games was insane. But I don't think, here's the thing. You know, like, now, like, fan culture is, like, a little bit toxic. Just yeah. a little. Just a little. Just a little. I, genuinely... I don't know if you... A lot. It depends on the... It depends on... I just don't want to... We know who we're talking about. Yeah. If you don't, mm-hmm. if you know, you know, you don't, you don't. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. With that. Um, I <laughs> think about like, your fucking think about your fan culture <laughs> yeah go look at your tweets yeah. and then we'll talk um <laughs> i feel like with the hunger games the fan base was like genuinely like really excited about it and like also mm-hmm. i wasn't su- it w- i wasn't like i wasn't on twitter i wasn't like on all these stuff yeah yet. Mm-hmm. so maybe it was just like i was experiencing just like the real life fans it, but it was yeah. so fun it was the first like because when harry potter came out the internet was not like how it is Mm-mm. today. Mm-hmm. Like the way we knew about Harry Potter was through like magazines and like paparazzi yeah. and stuff like right. that. And like what yeah. they like were feeding us. But Hunger Games, especially because of the connection to how like, you know, it is to the real life, you know, those yeah. parallels and stuff and the way like they marketed it, which we'll get to after, like it, it just made it. That's why I think like, especially for our generation, yeah it made such an impact because it was kind of like the first huge thing since Perry, Harry Potter. But like mm-hmm. now we have the added layer of like social media, social media and also like yeah. big marketing beyond like traditional media. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was really, it really like brought down like the fucking doors. Like it was a trip. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like making me think of all of like everything with it. Like now I'm like remembering like the posters, like the catching mm-hmm. fire posters. Right. And then like yeah. the mocking Jay part one, one where she's like sitting in the chair yeah. and that's the part one. Right. Mm-hmm. I think. It, yeah. I think, it's so yeah, yeah, true. yeah. Part one is the chair. And then the part two is like her, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. 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 I'm ready for the marketing before. Well, Wait. first, yeah, the music. Sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the marketing because the marketing is, like, a huge part of the Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like, mm-hmm. almost, in, like, it's ingrained in, like... What like yellow know. flicker beat, bitch. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so in the Atlas soundtrack. Sound. I yeah. definitely think this started the trend of, like, artists creating songs for, like, teen movies and, like, franchise movies because I don't mm-hmm. remember anything else doing it before. Mm-mm. This definitely wasn't a thing for Harry Potter. No. But everything since then, I mean, like, maybe Twilight... Did Twilight come out before? 2008? Oh, maybe Twilight. Yeah. Twilight. Um, Twilight did it, yeah. Yeah, Twilight did it. Well, yeah. was Supermassive Black Hole just... Oh, wait, no. I don't think... I don't know... Hold on. What, talk and... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's a good point. Okay, well, I don't know if this claim is correct, but I am currently claiming that, like, the soundtrack uh, for the first Hunger Games and every Jason movie after 
had like specific songs created by artists for the movies, um, mm-hmm. which helped. No, because I remember remember the thousand the Christina Perry song. Oh yeah, that was for um, New Moon. Oh, but that yeah. came, when did New Moon come out? Oh, okay, maybe Twilight did it first. Yeah, Twilight it was did. definitely yeah. Twilight. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Twilight's yeah, we gotta give that one to Twilight. <laughs> um, but the Hunger Games I, did a great job of it, and I think mm-hmm. okay, so they're safe and sound. By the Civil Wars featuring Ta- Taylor Swift. This was my, oh my God. I didn't even know the Civil Wars were singing. I thought it was just the Taylor Swift song. I would listen. I had this on my little iPod and I would listen to it. Oh my God. Like on the way yeah. to school. And you would cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For no reason. You would cry. I don't even think I knew what the song was about. No. Honestly, yeah. It was just sad. I was looking at the lyrics and I was like, I remember oh. like, yeah, I remember like, didn't she do like a music video for it too? Yeah. I think she did. Yeah, the music video. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's her walking through the woods in like a white dress yeah. and she's yeah. sad. Yeah. Like pre oh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I was about to say, yeah. I was like, Evermore Tea. This is definitely, yeah, that's Thanks. definitely the, what she was, yeah. she, she wanted this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she wanted it. Um, and then there was also Yellow Flicker Beat by Lord. And also, mm-hmm. okay, her cover of oh, Everybody Lord Wants to, to Rule the World for, I think yeah. it's in the trailers. So mm-hmm. good. So good. Oh, I got chills. I got yeah. chills singing about Definitely. it. I, I remember that cover. Like, I think they used it for another movie also because it was just so good. Like, recently. Mm-hmm. It's a great cover. I think so. I think you're I right. don't remember what movie, it is. Though, but it's a great cover. It's kind of like the Lana Del Rey cover of... Um, oh, my God. Lana Del Rey did covers of something for Maleficent and something for Scary Stories to Tell Me oh, About. Yeah. Like, and they're so good. And I think Lord uh-huh. kind of, like... It was the original. Similar, yeah, like, yeah. Was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was, um, okay, the thing about The Hanging Tree is that I don't think it should they have been really, made into a pop song. They really tried to, like, make Jennifer Lawrence a pop star for a second. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, they I did. don't know if that was the serve that No, it, it wasn't. Was. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't no. because <laughs> the song... I is, like how you completely went over Atlas by Coldplay. Wait, yeah, you, you can't believe oh, that. Coldplay. I, I like literally didn't even see it. Yeah, I can't forget that. Yeah. I forgot Coldplay. How dare you? I'm so sorry, Coldplay. Disrespect Chris Martin forget. like that. <laughs> I can't forget Coldplay. That's such a good soundtrack. I literally yeah. have been looking for the record for it for so long because I, I had it on uh, my car in my car and then it sold out and I haven't been able to find it. Oh, uh, dang. So sad. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they also did like an EDM re- remix of The Hanging Tree. That's twisted. I remember that. That's it's so, so sick. Bad. It's so Yeah, no. Like, I think it's weird because the movie is like about very deep things yeah. and i think it's funny that they like kind of played into the tropes that they were like commentating yeah. it's on. it's kind of like the black mirror mm-hmm. episode where miley cyrus made a song and they were like making fun of like all of that and they're like we yeah. love this song yeah they were like guys that was like the you completely missed yeah, the yeah. Uh, they're like, it was a good song though <laughs> yeah also i didn't know this elastic heart was written for catching fire what? with oh. cf featuring the weekend it was on the catching fire soundtrack before it was even on oh. the album I did not know that. Wow. And also, hey, I didn't know that either. There's another weird song. Oh, All My Love with Ariana Grande featuring like Major Lazer. How oh, was, I that remember was, that. That was from Mockingjay Part 1. Yeah. Oh, I think I remember that now. Yeah. Dang. So that. weird. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like Taylor Swift, I feel like makes sense. And like Lord. Yeah, yeah sense, absolutely. But, like Ariana Grande. Like, yeah. and this is like Ariana Grande, like Honeymoon, sense, too. Honeymoon Tour era. Like, yeah. she, was, Pop Ariana. she was still baby. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> So good though. Yeah, <laughs> still, I still love it. Yeah. Um, all right. So that was like the sort of the soundtrack part, which was also good. also the score, incredible. Like wh- how all the specific like music cues that they had, mm-hmm. I feel like are so r- recognizable, and they For did sure. a good job of like making it feel. They like, made a whistle like yeah. a thing. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. I'll get to that later. Definitely. I oh. Know. It ca- became like an actual like symbol for like. Mm-hmm. Res- that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, um, all right. So when I was in college, I I minored in market like interactive marketing, so like social media marketing and that kind of stuff. And for one of my classes, I had to write a paper on the Catching Fire like a marketing campaign. And I oh my god! I didn't realize it was a year long campaign. A year long whole campaign. Whole ass year. Like they had yeah. this like they had like phases, uh-huh. literally phases of it. And so it was run by Lion Gates marketing chief, Tim Pallon, who also, he did the Saw, like, Bloody Nurse marketing campaign, which I wasn't, like, I think, obviously, the Saw movies are a little bit before my time. But I mm-hmm. remember looking into this campaign, and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. What like, was it? So they did, they had photo shoots with, like, models, mm-hmm. um, and, like, dressed up in, like, nurse outfits, and they were, like, bloody, to promote, um, like, uh, blood donation things. Uh-oh. But it was, like, I 
remember hearing about it. It was crazy because like they would also they would accept um blood donations from like LGBTQ people, Mm -hmm. which was like not a thing Mm -hmm. because they would Mm -hmm. like deny them and like people with tattoos and that sort of thing. And they would give you like a for think a free ticket to go see the movie Mm -hmm. um if you donated blood. That's so good. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is he he up to now? Where is he? I think he's still the marketing chief. Okay. Oh, okay. Come on, Tim. Yeah. We need, we need to be <laughs> fed, Tim. so good. <laughs> um, and so what they did was they focused on the existing fans to, like, what, it, it's kind of like, I don't know, but they they just, like, relied on the fact that they will understand it. And then mm-hmm. they use like, the ambiguity of, like, the marketing materials to draw new people. Mm-hmm. So, like, the posters for um, Catching Fire were supposed to represent, like, posters that you would see in the capital to promote the yeah. actual Hunger Games. Um, and so they created a fake magazine called Capital Couture. And it, it so it's supposed to be a magazine that they release in the capital. I and, remember um, this now. Oh my yeah. God, it's like all coming back to me. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And so the character posters that were released, they would release two at a time. And mm-hmm. it was like the smaller characters leading up to like Gail and Peta and then Katniss. Mm-hmm. And so they would release it like every week, like weekly. And they would tease it like with the chair first and like, oh, what character are we gonna get? And they would literally every week have whatever characters trending on Twitter That's every crazy. single week. Wow. And they would have like motion posters and they would like, re- they would give it to um, like specific news outlets first so that mm-hmm. they would release it. And then they like, they would go trending on Twitter. Like that's crazy. Um, and they did it for every character and they're supposed to be like, uh, like, yeah, like promo shots to promote the Hunger Games. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember this one that it was like President Snow sitting with, Pete, or yeah, Peter and Katniss at his side. Mm. I love that poster. <laughs> it's so good. And then also like yeah. I, everyone is sitting in the chair except at Katniss is she's standing. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was like, oh, that's so smart. Symbolism. It was that's literally so just because she couldn't sit in the dress. It was yeah, like a Swarovski yeah. like crystal dress, and she just couldn't sit in it. She couldn't. So sit. they were just like, well, let's work with it. Um, mm-hmm. And then they but also, it worked. It worked so well. Um, and so they partnered with companies like CoverGirl and China Glaze to create um, signature styles and makeup looks. That I do remember a makeup palette. Yeah, too. yeah, and I remember that. They I did. definitely had like the the nail polish. Yeah, yeah. me too. They're like all metallic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, okay, I didn't know this actually, but I was looking into. There's a variety article that I will put um, in the link in our bio, just so because it's really rich. If there are any marketing nerds out there, because I feel like some people are. Um, I was like having a good time reading that. It's such a good article. Um, but yeah. something that I really didn't notice was that they tried not to show um, Jennifer Lawrence, Josh Hutcherson, and um, Liam Hemsworth together in the pro- promotional materials to make sure that they that audiences didn't think this was a love story. So oh. they would try. They did Peta and the Katniss together because, like, they were like the victors. So that was kind of mm-hmm. what they that were going sense. for. But they didn't do. You know how in Twilight the posters are. Bella, Edward, and uh, Jacob, like all together, being Standing serious, very close, together. very close. Yeah, with Bella's hand on Edward's chest. Yeah. Um. Uh-huh. So they were like, "We're not going to do that. We're going to yeah. do the exact opposite because they wanted to not alienate like, quote like male fans mm-hmm. who were like, I don't, I don't want it to be a love story. They didn't want to make it like a. They want want to make it like a romance. Movie yeah. To like yeah. Um, and I think, pigeonhole themselves. I think they mm-hmm. did a good job with that. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Because when I think about Twilight, I feel like it's a lot of female fans yeah mm-hmm. and when i think of hunger games i think it's like pretty all-encompassing yeah everyone For was sure. a fan of the hunger games mm-hmm. yeah that's crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> anyways that was my little marketing rant because i think <laughs> it's iconic yeah to be honest yeah so good it's amazing the um, fact that you're learning about it in school just proves like that they did the right thing. i remember when they oh, gave me sure. that assignment i was like i'm ready <laughs> i've been waiting you're like this is my time <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um all right, so now we can get a little bit into the actual movies. Like, um, so, you know, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and then Mark and J. Part 1 and Part 2, which we can talk about that split, too, because I don't know. It was the first movie to do that, and I don't know. Oh, no, Harry Potter. Harry Potter did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Twilight did that. Yeah. Who, who was the the, the trendsetter? Yeah, who did it first? Was it Harry Potter? Harry Potter had to be. Wait, no, because Harry Potter, the last one came out in, like, 2016. Oh. oh. So it might have been Hunger Games. And I don't remember well, if I... It was like a dystopian <laughs> fantasy thing. Yeah, it was a thing. thing. I just well, okay. We'll I'm get not to a huge fan here. of like that. No, me either. So, mm-hmm. that's anyways, how I feel about it. Okay, so like I get it's a long book, but it's not that much longer than the other two, like Catching Fire. You know what I mean? It didn't need to like be Harry there. Potter. It kind of makes sense because that book is gigantic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Mockingjay wasn't, and I feel like when I I didn't finish Mockingjay, but the I read most of it. 
And I was like, I feel like this could have been one movie. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't even watch the last movie of Hunger and Games. Wait, now. really? Now that I know. I know what happens. I have the box. Yeah. Out. I'm going to watch it now. Um, now that I yeah. get it a little bit more. Yeah. You, you should. You should watch it. It's worth okay, watching. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I love the movies. They're great rewatches. Um, okay, but let's go through the movie, 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 movie. Um, okay, so The Hunger Games, that was the first mm-hmm. one. And it's basically the introduction we get to the universe. Um, it's the first Hunger Games, so I think this is the 44th, because the next ones are the 45th. Um, and we get to meet all the main characters, and it ends with um, Peta and Katniss sort of rebelling mm-hmm. and winning the Hunger Games together. And mm-hmm. that, like, kickstarts a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, okay, re-watching this movie, the pacing is really quick. It moves yeah. so yes. incredibly fast. Yeah, I did watch mm-hmm. the first movie last night. And I was... I. Because the other two movies but are like, not like good that. for kids, you know. Like yeah. I think, because like, I think that's why I didn't like Harry Potter very much as a kid. Because so I was like, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> this is moving yeah. way too. So there's too much talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not following at all. But I, yeah. I think it was good. Like it was good that like um, families could watch it all together yeah. and the kids could mm-hmm. like actually pay attention during the movie. And I think also the way the reason that it was so interesting was because when the characters were having conversations. The setups were like dynamic enough that you wouldn't get bored. Mm-hmm. Like it was very That's quick. Yeah. 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 So like Hamish hey talking to Peta and Katniss, they're like in a moving train. So outside you see the world of the Hunger mm-hmm. Games and everything, and yeah. you see like the um, what was the name of the workers with no tongues? Oh, the A boxes. Uh, yeah. Like, so you see, yeah. Yeah. So like the mm-hmm. world is still building while the conversation is happening. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. so good. Yeah, um, definitely. I think my favorite is definitely Catching Fire. I think that's like yeah, I think that's I'm like Catching Fire, yeah. yeah. It's so good. Um, mm-hmm. So then Catching Fire was the second one in which they do like an all stars. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> movie is all stars, <laughs> um, but it's just like President Snow trying to get kill Katniss and Peeta. Um, yeah. But I remember in this movie. Okay, first of all, I love the whole press tour aspect of the Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like so twisted. But when Peeta goes like when he did the whole baby thing, I was like, oh shark. Oh yeah, shark, yeah. Where he's like, yeah. oh, if it wasn't for the baby, and we had king of marketing. Yeah, I just well, don't remember. Was it though? Like, oh wait, was it the first or second movie? I think it was the first one where he said, "I love you," and Katniss literally almost fucking murdered yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of iconic. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's the first. One. Is yeah, it's the first. That's one, the first right? one. And then she like she like pushes him against the wall, and she's like, "Yeah, she literally like has him in yeah. a fucking chokehold," and Hamish is like, "He fucking saved your life, bitch." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. No, but, but I, I was gonna say like, oh no, I was just gonna say like the scene, um, the scene I think in Catching Fire, like where they're on that press tour and like they're in Rue's district and then everything just goes like crazy with the, yeah. and then everything with the old man. That scene is crazy, like too. And then when they go upstairs and then Hamish is like, what is happening? Like you know, yeah, yeah. that scene it's is extremely really powerful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The Catching Fire definitely introduces some of like the best characters. Oh, hundred percent. With like jo- Joanne. Well, I feel name? like that's oh, like, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's like a uh, what's it called? I feel like that's a common thing. Like mm-hmm. for that, the sequel would be better because you like. I think we said this before. Like yeah. season one is like the world building, or like the first mm-hmm. movie is the world building, and then the second you like you're understanding what's going on, so it's like you're on the in. Yeah. So you can like enjoy it a little bit better. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like insight yeah. that you're in on. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of like Francis Lawrence's direction better than Gary mm-hmm. Ross's slightly, I think so you know? Too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I, I like even though the the hunger the first one is like super fast paced, I liked that it slowed down just a little. Yeah. Because it gave Definitely. us, I think, more meaningful moments and like uh just to understand like and like as the movies go on, the, the it definitely matures. Like, the first one definitely feels like it's, like, a teen YA novel, but then as you go on, you're like, oh, my God. And I think for me, that's why I wasn't, like, I think that's why I wasn't a huge fan. Because I think it got, like, too... Too dark. Too too dark for me. Too dark. Because I was, like, I was a rom-com person. Like, I like, like, the light stuff. And so, like, I liked the first one because it was, like, I... It was light, but also, like, it had, like, killing. So, like, that's why I was like, okay, I can like, still, like, follow. Yeah. And I You're think, like, okay. like, I literally, I wrote on the doc, I was like, I think I got whiplash by, like, how quick, like, yeah. it turned. Because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, obviously, they have, like, only, like, two hours to, like, fill it. And I think, like, I was like, ooh, Catching Fire was really good. And then, like, Mockingjay, I was like, whoa. I remember reading yeah. it. I was like, I was like, oh. 
Like once the war started, once they like found the underground, the Not lost the district. Yeah, oh, once they found yeah. the lost district, I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Um, district 13, yeah. The first one's actually not even the shortest. It's, actually, it's two hours and 22. Catching Fire is two hours and 26. Um, Mockingjay Part 1 is two hours and three. And then Mockingjay Part 2 is two hours and 17. Which, oh, but it doesn't feel like that. It the last one feels feel longer. Like well, I haven't yeah. watched it, but would you say the last one yeah. feels longer? It drags than, a little definitely. bit. Yeah. Yeah, the last one definitely feels longer. You know. But then at the same time, I'm kind of glad that they like did split it up to like fully give the story that time and like to yeah. not rush anything, you know? So, because like that would have been a bummer if like they did like put it in the one movie and just like rush everything. And yeah. It might have not turned out the same. But didn't the, isn't the last movie just about her trying to kill President Snow and like her moving across like the city. Is yeah. that the first or second one? Oh, um, on. I don't remember. I think that is the second one where they like, oh, she goes to the, the Capitol and they didn't want her to go and stuff, but like she ends up going anyway. And then she's with the group of like everyone. And then yeah. they have PETA back, but he's not mm-hmm. the same after like being yeah. tortured and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the part mm-hmm. one ends with them finding PETA and he like tries to get yeah. Katniss. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That part, like when I read that in the book, so I was scary. like, "It was crazy." I, I'm sad. I cannot finish the book. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. I literally, I like was like, I like, I, it was like a big deal because I it was is. like, it's... I was like sad as fuck, and so I was like, mm-hmm. I don't think I can read the rest. Like, and I just read yeah. the last couple of chapters, so I knew how it ended. Oh, okay. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm missing like this much of the book. Yeah. <laughs> like. Eh. Yeah. I feel like I no, but I'm seeing fine. that in the movie too, and then seeing like when she goes into like talk to him, and then he's in the room, and he's all like restrained and just like all going like nuts and stuff. Like it's it's crazy. It's mm. it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I do think what they could have done is maybe add like another storyline or two to beef it up. That's a, little a good bit. point. Yeah, I That's don't think movie. the B plots were lacking in the like last two movies. Um, which like I get they're trying to be faithful, but like it just was not enough yeah. to justify yeah. two movies. But it also needed a little bit more than one movie mm-hmm. so like i don't know oh that's an, what you just mentioned julia like i was watching this youtube video i think it was i forget which one of us but mm-hmm. i was at the comments and it's like the thing that katniss wanted most was to save her sister and the thing Peter wanted most is not to change who he was and the war could both things i was like exactly yeah. i was like yeah. whoa it's very it's really true though yeah and that's fucking sad it is yeah. it's, it's literally it's, yeah i remember when i first read the book i was like i know i didn't read that right mm-hmm. i know i didn't read that right it wasn't gail the one that killed yeah him. yeah he was the one that like yeah. but not in the movie and then he like didn't understand that like I don't know. He wanted to like be with her, but like, how could she like? She could never like be with him after that, you know. No, the one thing she loved was her sister. Her well, sister, just, okay, and he I took that it, away from her. Yeah. You know? I think what it was was that like, okay, Gail authorized the strike, but he thought it was going to be all capital children, mm-hmm. and he and um, Katniss's sister had gone into help. Yeah, so Gail ended up know. working for the capital. Yeah, he, that's how. Yeah, okay. is like that mm-hmm. in the movie. No, no, no. Wait, he doesn't. He works for District Thirteen. He was like part. Uh, okay. of, he was like the leader um, of the rebels yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. because in the movie it was the capital. No, no, it wasn't. They thought she thought it was the capital that yeah. that did the bombings, but it was the strict. It was President uh, Coin okay. and Gale. And yeah, that's why yeah. she was like, What the hell? No one <gasps> Yeah. And then she I remember, like, okay, the conversation towards the end when they're about to execute President Snow and Katniss is talking to President Coin and whatever, and President Coin's gonna like be the new leader or whatever. And she mm-hmm. was like, We're gonna set up like a new Hunger Games with the Capital Kids. And yeah. Katniss was like, no, you're not. No, yeah. no you're not. Yeah. She was like, no well, way. it's like only fair. And Gail was no, like, yeah, we kind of have to. No, it's no, you it, don't. That's exactly <laughs> like her game. And he was like, why that she could like never be with him. Like, he was never yeah. going to understand, you know? But he's been like that the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He's, he's, so he's always, always been, been like sure. that. He's, he's always, always had like the way. hottest takes, but in the wrong way. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Gail. Why why is it even like a mention of a team girl? Like there is no team girl. There there is no no team girl. Like I remember reading it and I was like, I don't care about this guy. No. He's right? so he, like he he's literally breathing toxic masculinity. I think the yeah. reason I think literally Gail's only like point to be in the story was for the end. Mm. Like for it to show that like even That's people like that you think you know are but like end up, Yeah. I know. Did we really like, like that? I don't think we needed the romantic aspect yeah. as much. She, they could have just been BFFs. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Maybe if like they had yes. made the character like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think adding the romance was just like a bit dumb. Much. 
like no, and no. I always think that like it was like you know like I've talked about this before but like I hate when like they just add the romance for no reason like being mm-hmm. childhood friends is enough emotion yeah to carry mm-hmm. the fucking plot you yeah. don't need to add the romance to it yeah um just because it's Liam Hemsworth doesn't mean she needs to like yeah. <laughs> okay do they kiss? I don't remember. Yeah, they do kiss. Yeah. <laughs> and every, I was pissed. I was like, I don't like him. I yeah, like, same. Yeah. yeah. I was like, the same neither time, of them. I like, wouldn't like change anything and like how yeah. it was done, you know? But yeah, that part is frustrating. It's kind of like, why? Like, no, it's yeah. not necessary. No, nah, yeah. nope. Okay, I was telling Kim this yesterday and I... I always do. I always give like hot takes on this podcast, but I feel like this is one that I can actually back up okay. with like supporting like facts or whatever. I think the Hunger Games is the only franchise that had a good ending, where yeah. it was like satisfying enough for fans, but it didn't like mm-hmm. um, give up the integrity of the story that yeah. we've been literally yeah. living with for years. Because like, yeah. I mean, like for comparison, like Harry Potter, that ending is like. I'm sorry, but it's so lackluster where, like, I genuinely think it should have ended with Harry Potter dying and, like, saving everyone. Yeah. Because, like, the whole thing was, like, the boy who lived, but, like, then, like, it's literally right there. Literally. And then she, like, chickened out, and then... But, like, that would have been, like, such, like, a big grab. Like, the hero, like, sacrificed him, like, himself as one person to save, Mm -hmm. to benefit everybody. And it's literally, like, yeah. It was set up from the beginning. like, the good of everyone. Um, Yeah. And then, like, even, like, the epilogue with, like, when they're in like the future, I was like, "This is too much." It would yeah. it would have been like even more impactful if it yeah. was if it was Ron and Hermione like honoring like yeah. Harry and like remembering oh, him. Oh yeah, that would have been cute and like telling stories to their kids. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, that's true. I, why it's am so I making upsetting. myself cry? And I don't even like Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <"Ooh." laughs> yeah. Okay. So that was Harry Potter, and then like I guess the mm-hmm. other one is like Twilight, which I'm not really a huge fan of the Twilight ending either. I don't even remember how it ends. It that's ends. Yeah. It ends with like. So the Volturi like basically back off, and then Jacob and helps take care of Renesme and Bella and Edward live happily ever after. Um, so uh, lame. They no, yeah, nobody faces any consequences for literally anything. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, so upset. Out. Yeah. I do think I will give the movie credit for that. Inc- the fight scene. Oh yeah. I will give them that mm. because that fight scene was good. Yeah. And a great way to like spice up the ending th- from what it was in the books. But like, yeah. So that's why I think with the Hunger Games, it's like. <laughs> it was so crazy. Yeah. Like in the theater, because everyone yeah. was like, this is not the Everyone has their books. They're like, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, fair. I know that didn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, and I think with the Hunger Games, it's like, oh, yeah, we still get Peta and Katniss together. Mm-hmm. But we, there were still consequences for everything that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we still get actual arcs for other characters. We still lost characters that were like impactful deaths, like Finnick. Definitely. Like that, that was impactful. And then, like, mm-hmm. the last choice, I think, with um, so, like, right before President Snow is about to get executed, and she decides to kill President Coin instead. Yeah. That is so good. Mm-hmm. And I remember, oh, like, definitely. when I first read it, I was like, I honestly don't get what's going on. Yeah. You don't get the nuances because you're a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You um, kind of have to, like, read it again and be like, what? Huh? I was like, oh, yeah. so she's, like, mad at her? <laughs> 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 coin do. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Um, yeah. But I think that and then the ending with, like, her, it's, like, Peta and Katniss in the field. And, like, yeah, they have kids and they're happy now, but, like, they're still not okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're still they're not they're okay. Yeah, they everything. don't magically come over all the trauma. Yeah. No, you know, they... Which I think is yeah. valid because, like, in, like, I guess Twilight, like, there's a lot of trauma that Bella has. And, like, it, like I think it would have been... And, like, also I think that's, like, a thing that's important for, like, uh, especially when it's like younger people watching your stuff, like it, trauma happens and you need to like deal with it yeah. and yeah. like talk about and it, especially it. when it ha- when it like includes your significant other. Yeah. yeah. And Twilight did not do that. No. And yeah. that's why it's like that's why I'm like I love Twilight, but also like toxic as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, they're not relationship goals. No, they're not. Uh-uh. No. And also, I feel like they never really like. It went in depth more on the consequences of Bella turning into a vampire because, like, mm-hmm. yeah, sure, like the Volturi were mad, but like, her dad's like, what about Charlie? What about Charlie? Like, <laughs> I don't. Her whole family, yeah. like, they're just gonna like, move. and like, I guess, like, yeah, she didn't really have that many connections to like the human world, I guess. Yeah. Like all her BFFs were like monsters, <laughs> and, um, but <laughs> I don't know. I just remember thinking like when Charlie goes to visit her and they like kind of imply that she's been, but they can't really tell him. Yeah. I was like, this is so sad. But. 
uh, also like I think it's interesting looking at it as an adult and like like because when we're reading it as kids we're identifying directly with Katniss and we're like okay she's a girl boss like she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's the one at the forefront but then I think once you're like watching as an adult you're realizing like no everybody's using her yeah and she's just yeah. a figurehead she yeah. because yeah. like because she's also a child yeah she's thinking mm-hmm. she is in control so it's like this weird game that yeah. they're it's playing weird game. and it's like and then like how the ending is it's like her realizing finally yeah. like i mean she's had like I and mean, she's not dumb. but it's like the one action that yeah. is hers like yeah. yes, hers. Like, yes exactly and i think that's why the ending is so good yeah because she actually because she it's been years you know yeah. she actually like matured she has all this trauma yeah. Her yeah. like she's been a figurehead of a revolution yeah and mm-hmm. it's it, she realizes i mean it's really shitty because like yeah. it's very much reminiscent of like how the world it has been yeah for mm-hmm. us and For it's sure. just like you see, like what do you say? It was like Snow was the Republican Party, quote unquote. Yeah, and Court yeah. was like the Democratic Party, yeah. quote unquote. And you realize like both are evil. Yeah. And neither of them have anybody's best interest when it comes to the yeah. for like people of America. Yeah. And that's like. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. yeah. And I mean, I didn't even like think of it like you know, kind of in that way. Well, mm-hmm. I guess kind of there's that whole other layer now that we probably like mm-hmm. understand more that we're older about like trauma and like how she needs to process that. And I mean, they always say, do, do, doesn't like Peter say too? Like, I don't want to be a like a piece in their games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what they end up being is just you yeah. know they're just figureheads. They're just kids still, which is like crazy. But yeah, yeah, that decision at the end is like that's like you said, that's her one decision that's hers. That is so nasty that they use kids. Like I will never yeah. get over it. It's like, crazy. That's, like, crazy. That like had to be because I remember when people were like, I don't know why kids like this. Like it's like kids being murdered and blah blah. And I was like, Have you watched? Y'all watch the ner- yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like turn on the TV. Watch the news. Yeah. Like there's like stuff like this happening all the time. Like Lord literally... of the Flies existed before this. But like, also like yeah. Like okay, they're like oh my god, wouldn't it, it's crazy to like go send kids off to die. Okay, what do you think the military is? Mm, yeah. Not like they literally, they literally. literally have stations set up in high school yeah. to recruit people. So like, I don't want to hear it. I don't know. Um, literally I though, yeah. Suzanne Collins is. She's that. She's that, she's that she's girl. girl. Yeah, she's that girl. Yeah. Um, also, you wrote Justice for Finnick. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just sucks. He it was he suck. was like he had a yeah. like the best character arc. He did, and but best character did. Arc. I think, But it, I, I agree yeah. with you that it was like needed, especially like. Yeah. And in terms of consequences and also to really cement the character arc. Yeah. But like it sucked. Especially I can still be sad about they it. They set up yeah. the whole thing with um what's his wife's name? Oh, Annie. Annie. Yeah. Oh my god. That one, that I know. Was, oh my god. That was literally so sad. Wow. It was a lot. Yeah. It was a I'm lot. Depressed though. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, anyways, so obviously the movies were going to have a, a huge impact, especially because, like, the themes of, like, rebellion and, like, standing up to, like, the government. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Obviously, that resonates a little bit with mm-hmm. people in the world. Just a um, little. Just a yeah, bit. and I actually, I didn't even know, but there's, like, videos of this, but, like, um, the three-finger gesture that, where did she come up with? It's like a, it's like a old sign of, like, peace. And she mm-hmm. she okay. does it when Rue, Rue dies. dies. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, that like the three finger gesture used to express unity with the rebellion mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. has been used in real life protests. And uh, there was one in Thailand in 2020, one in Myanmar in 2021. And they're like, mm-hmm. actually, it like became a symbol of that, mm-hmm. which I think is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's crazy. Something that like you create, like, I mean, like for Suzanne Collins' point of view, but like something that like, you create. Three created, fingers together. Yeah. Like that is yeah. crazy. crazy. Like it resonated yeah. with people that strongly. It's mm-hmm. um, amazing. Even like, I think quotes, like from the books, I've seen that at like protests mm-hmm. and like on like, on like, uh, like cardboard posters and stuff, um, mm-hmm. which is crazy that like, it like had that much impact. And I think it's really interesting, like how we're talking about, how you're talking about like how people are like, why are like gen z like so worried about this like because we read this shit growing this is like this was the biggest franchise for us growing up like Mm -hmm. obviously i think it just shows like how much like adults didn't pay attention to like the stuff that we were reading and And they thought we weren't paying attention but we Mm -hmm. were the ones that internalized it and like yes like maybe we didn't get it like sir like we didn't get it while we were reading it 
but it, you're still reading the rhythm, you're still digesting it, and then you interpret yeah. things when you get older, and you're like, oh, fuck. The seed was planted. Yeah. yeah, the seed was planted, and Suzanne Collins did what she needed to do. She did. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, like, made everyone aware, and everyone realized that it's like, okay, like, we need to take things seriously. We need to care about our future. Like, we need to, like, stand up for what we believe in, and I feel like mm-hmm. it gave everyone, like, the courage to do that and, like, yeah. be more vocal about stuff and, like, that's we've really seen that in movements in the past couple years mm. and I think that's definitely like amazing to see and like I feel like I even recently with like the Met Gala for example I saw people mm. on TikTok like saying like oh like this is like capital vibes of like the Hungry Games yeah. so, like it's just still like you know mm-hmm. like prevalent and obviously like so many different ways and just people were like oh just the comparison of like you know the rich people dressing up mm-hmm. in the capital and like not caring about actual things that are happening in society and I was like wow that's yeah it's like okay yeah. like it's just so like the hunger is just so like relevant and like mm-hmm. Suzanne yeah. Collins really did that like you know yeah she did and I think that also yeah. the thing is like with Katniss as the main character she never makes Katniss into like the like oh like I my life is so hard yeah, yeah. like I like Katniss is always she's complex and like she like gets sad yeah mm-hmm. well okay so like okay hold on we need to also link this in the bio this um youtube essay it's understanding hunger games media and culture analysis okay. it literally only has it has under seven thousand views okay. and it's mm-hmm. like it's so good so okay. it was amazing. It. Okay, okay. um yeah. and she was talking about how katniss like piggybacking off what you're yeah. saying um katniss ha- is like masculine mm-hmm. or for us mm-hmm. pita is traditionally like, pretty feminine yeah and i yeah. think that was like a huge thing for like people to see and like mm-hmm. like um that's why i think katniss also because you know like how like i think katniss really was like a shift in like how women yeah, interact yeah, yeah. with the world because i mean mm-hmm. we just did the wrong kinds episode yeah, yeah. like yes that they're like dainty and like they're traditionally <laughs> girly girly but then mm-hmm. katniss came along and then we all love her yeah. because right. we know what she's doing and we're like i want to be more like katniss yeah. and i think that's what i think katniss did really affect how women interact with like dating interact with men and like today like generation that is a bold statement but like i really do even a little bit i'm like i believe that too yeah Yeah. 100 percent. because we didn't have like when you think about it before like our parents and like even like older millennials like they didn't have they didn't grow up with hunger games so like mm-hmm. that's why I think they have traditional like gender roles still like really yeah. implanted mm-hmm. in their brain. But for sure. we have like Katniss, like we're like, well, why does the man have to be like yeah. the yeah. dominant one when Katniss was over here literally babying Petey the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like babysitting yeah. him. And I, I think yeah, I think that dynamic is what helped it so much because there are like like you can look back at like maybe like the horror genre and stuff and see like female characters that are like like okay, they're like they prevail, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But they're still like I guess traditionally female at the end they, at the end they still fall back into the feminine yeah. role and the man right. ultimately does come back yeah and like re- like is in that mass traditionally masculine yeah. role or for mm-hmm. katniss was masculine quote-unquote the entire time and pita was baby yeah. in paradise <laughs> yeah like, he, like, i know baby sad. and then he gets brainwashed yeah. and it's extra sad yeah because <laughs> yeah. he really didn't do anything wrong he, really he was yeah. literally like probably one of the purest characters and he probably got the fucking worst fucking treatment yeah. and it, it needed Absolutely. to happen because like we needed to feel that emotion because yeah. that does happen mm-hmm. in real life like it really is the most innocent people that get like brainwashed and like fucked up because they're yeah. just trying to like purely live in this world and that's mm-hmm. just not how reality is yeah and that sucks Damn. Yeah, and, like, it's really so just, like, sad. <laughs> i know she was really just like a strong female lead obviously and like one of the first ones i feel like we were all ever introduced to mm-hmm. like she just didn't back down which is amazing and so that mm-hmm. you know that's still inspiring and like prevalent today and yeah it's just it is really sad with Peta. that's a good point honestly i hadn't yeah. like thought about it like that way either it's just like sad because the worst things happen to the best people sometimes yeah. unfortunately you know like it's yeah. a good example of that but i guess it's unfortunately just life sometimes yeah you know? and like yeah. um kind of sister she all she, oh, she was yeah. helping the capitals kids and then she dies because of it mm-hmm. which is like mm-hmm. and gail lives and gail is like a jerk the whole time yeah that's true so, like, hmm. <laughs> he Ooh. thinks about real life <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely um but also like i there's like a bunch of things i had on yeah. there there's also more that we don't have time to get into yeah, yeah. because mm-hmm. there were because there's four fucking bo- or four movies three books like and a prequel like yeah. there is a lot to unpack yeah. that we just can't 
Um, but obviously the biggest one um, is media yeah. and how media like framing and like how we perceive like media, like famous people even and mm -hmm. like reality TV, obviously. And I think that one of the biggest things that that essay said was like fiction disguised as fact. And that's mm -hmm. literally the entire Hunger Games, like the the Hunger Games. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, how it's like perceived and like even down to like the what's it called? The ceremony that they pick the people. Victor. The reaping. The reaping. Oh, the the reaping. reaping. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Even like during the reaping when they're like have that video that everybody's watching about like why they do it and it's just mm -hmm. like setting up like like repressing people, you yeah. know, and that yeah. ties into the mean world syndrome, which I was like, I forgot this was a thing, yeah. but yeah. I remembered when I saw it and it's basically like this thing where it's like um, it's like media showing people things and making people believe that the world is way worse than it actually is and it, it targets people, I guess in um, terms of Hunger Games would be like District 12 and like the lower districts that mm -hmm. are like poorer. Um, so it makes them not want to rebel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and I mean, we can see that in the way like Katniss reacts to like all the capital things. And also like when she does do after Rue dies and she does the symbol and it starts like a riot almost yeah. immediately yeah. in, mm -hmm. in Rue's district. In I believe. Yeah. In Rue's district. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. That was like the scene I was, Oh yeah, no, I know that's a different scene, but yeah, mm -hmm. in Bruce District, yeah. And I thought it was so interesting that even like these kids that were victors, like Peta and Katniss, like, I mean, yeah, they were being controlled, but also like they did test waters, and then when they went on their victor tour and they they honored directly Rue and yeah. Tresh. Like obviously, when we were watching that, we didn't understand the implications of that, yeah. and the fact mm -hmm. that they attacked that that many years ago. Mm -hmm. just shows like how much we have yeah. it changed as a society and how and why this movie does still resonate and honestly gets better with age not yeah. in like the way we want it to yeah but it but, helps like i mean yeah. that's why i think like movies and television are so important and are a valid like valid art form and like yeah. valid oh, like um reflection of like our world because like it, it helps us process yeah. what's going mm -hmm. on and like mm -hmm. it, it still allows escapism but we're able to take stuff with us home yeah. you know yeah. and like connect the dots yeah. you know yeah we're able so, to like process the human experience you know yeah exactly it's like yeah so i think that's interesting and also like how they do propaganda yeah and like mm -hmm. just like also and how they in ingrain the propaganda within the like the marketing yeah. and the tour mm -hmm. is just so insane and like how they have to like yeah. prep and it's really interesting when you think yeah. about like celebrity culture, even politicians, like mm -hmm. there are like Hamiches out there and Effies yeah. talking yeah. to the figureheads, which are the celebrities and politician. Cause yeah. it's not just the politician and celebrities making this shit up. Like yeah. they have a whole team of people. Mm -hmm. It's so, there's so much. Like that one it scene. It just addresses just, everything. <laughs> yeah. It really, yeah. It really does. Yeah. But that one scene in Mark and J part one where, um, they're doing like the promo, <laughs> like they're, they're filming a promo mm -hmm. with a green yeah. screen. Yeah. And they're, Katniss is like, why don't we just go film it outside? And they're like, we're not, we're not going to put you in danger. Like we can't, you're like the star. And so like they film her in front of like a green screen, making it look yeah. like she's in the rubble of like district 12. Um, and Katniss is like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. This is so stupid. And they're like, well, you're like, you're the star. Like you're the figurehead. We can't get you actually hurt mm -hmm. and i think that's yeah. why like it, it's so important when Marco J part two she's the one that's just like well i'm going yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. and it's it is interesting like how sometimes especially with social media now it's not it was very different like back when hungry Games were like first came out but also like how maybe um activists in the communities yeah, yeah. like start <laughs> becoming figureheads in a way mm -hmm. and like it's interesting to see what or politicians also like they like can AOC. say whatever they yeah, yeah they can say whatever they want but then they're gonna go behind closed doors when it's not even closed doors because it's public record yeah and then mm -hmm. vote against what they were fighting for yeah and it's yeah. just like it's so interesting yeah it is like my mind I'm, i feel like um <laughs> charlie and um in uh always sunny philadelphia oh, yeah. when you're oh, like, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> um and also like the capital being like a representation it is like like what you said like the met gala like yeah. celebrities and like the one percent mm -hmm. and stuff 
and how they are so detached yeah. from what's going on. They genuinely don't give a fuck. Yeah. And they're oh, yeah, using exactly. people that are in lower income and like shitty situations as entertainment. Yeah. yeah. And they do that 100%. every year. They make bets. They buy them things to help them if they like them. And it's, it's so. Yeah. And, and like even every little detail about the Capitol is so specific. And so like, like she's literally like she throws it in our face. She's like, "Do you guys get it?" Yeah, um, like, because like yeah, because I mean, if you but, don't, like here it is, you know. Yeah, and like where they have um when they go to the party and mm-hmm. they give Peta this drink that it's like, oh, this is yeah. to throw up so you can eat more. Yep. And he's yeah, and yeah, so mad. He's yeah. like, "There's people over here that can't even eat, and you're over here, like, yeah, throwing up so you can eat more." Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. So good. It's yeah, so weird. and it, it's not far fetched, you no, know. Like yeah. they, oh, yeah, visually, definitely. they are far fetched. Yeah, in a way, mm-hmm. in a way, but and they like it, it's it's just a little bit out of reality enough mm-hmm. where yeah. you're like, oh, okay, this is like a fantasy world. Mm-hmm. But if you take it down a little notch, there is waste. Yeah, and there's all this. Yeah, like it's it's not yeah. that far out. There's of just reality. so many parallels, you know. Yeah. Like, I was thinking about, like, just watching, like, these YouTube videos, like, one of the YouTube mm-hmm. videos I watched, and then, like, I don't usually look at YouTube comments, you know, and, like, yeah. having discussion. It's important to have, like, other people's opinions and stuff, mm-hmm. and so I think it's and it's interesting when you think about it in terms of Hunger Games, when you have these figureheads, and, you know, Katniss wants the best, and she does mm-hmm. genuinely think that she's doing, like, the right thing. Mm-hmm. until like the seams just kind of come unraveled and stuff and yeah i think that is like it also is a coming of age story yeah mm-hmm. it really is because it really that's is, how it yeah. feels right now to be like a 20 something year old yeah. to like For see sure. these like these like the wizard of oz like you see like the fucking the the wizard is just this guy behind the curtain yeah yeah and it's like it's so understand everything uh-huh but i think yeah. You know, it, it could be easy, especially with the ending of Hunger Games, to kind of look at it glass half empty, you mm-hmm. know, and like be like, yeah, I mean, they had the kids, they're married, whatever, they're kind of happy considering their circumstances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think it just because the way they ended up, like, doesn't discount all the shit that happened, like, in the, like, all the thing, all the events leading up to it yeah. shouldn't discount, yeah. it, you know? Definitely. You know? kind of sad like bittersweet yeah yeah Yeah. bittersweet ending you know Mm -hmm. and it just it's crazy it still boggles my mind that it 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 held up yeah Yeah. it held holds up this time like i can go watch this tomorrow i can go watch this in 30 years and still like find probably something new yeah that like resonates with how the world is today and like help me process yeah what's going on yeah oh that's crazy so fun yeah this is yeah. everyone listening this is your sign to go rewatch and reread the hunger games honestly um, mm-hmm. the new one's coming out you ready? yeah i think they're making it into a trilogy or something oh i don't know if it's what? just that one yeah i don't know I, I are they the thing. I wait really they're doing, some, they're doing something weird with it hmm. oh interesting yeah i don't huh. know i guess we'll see um yeah. yeah that's all we have for today um julia do you want to plug any of your social media or anything where people can find you and any future projects um yeah i mean my instagram is at uh julia underscore b24 um i'll be you know working on some future projects for the um Calu, like um tv and film club mm-hmm. and just you know some fun stuff so yeah yeah so exciting thank you for joining us yeah thanks um, for having me it was so fun yeah this was so fun yeah that, i honestly had a lot way more i had way more to say than i thought, thought. yeah yeah it always mm-hmm. happens like that i always yeah. have something to say yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Makes you think. Um, All right, everyone. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next week.